Twitter. Tired. What's what's something? Target not yet, but Target coming. Huh? Target. Oh, what's twenty six? Yeah, we'll start. We usually started like six o. If Tyler ain't here, we started out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know how to, you know my intro? And then wake up everybody and finish my intro with the alarm, and then wake up everybody. You didn't go to traffic and weather. Traffic and weather. Did you play all the commercials and all the... Did you put her name up there? Yep, man. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking crazy, man. You're listening to The Morning Show with Mays Jackson on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. What's her name? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? The WBON Morning Show. Call 773 591 Wake up! Man. No more back to thinking, time for thinking. I swear to God, man. And I could do everything in the goddamn world and be here on time. Wake up, Chicago. Wake up, world. This is the WBON Morning Show. 
I'm your host, Mage Jackson, and I guess I'll just be rolling solo dolo. You know what? Uh, you know what? I'm not going to even go here right now. It's the WBOM Morning Show. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. I do not have a co-host in right now. I'm, I will assume that he's on. He's in route. Uh, Jennifer Thompson is not in the newsroom. We got Samantha Thomas sitting there with us in the news. Uh, and LaTierra, you are in the new, is sitting in for Sonia Escobar. You know what? So this is what I'm trying to understand. How was I at the All-Star game till 2 o'clock, till 11 o'clock in the morning? 11 o'clock. Take care of all the business and I'm here on time and everybody else running up in this mug like they was, you know what? When I'm famous one day, when I'm famous one day, I'm going to tell y'all what. It's going to be all good. It's going to be all good. All right, well, uh, I don't have a co-host. I'm looking for my rundown. Um, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to just rock and roll like it's all good. And I'm going to say, hey, uh, this is the WBON Morning Show. So check it out, y'all. It is the end of All-Star Weekend. Maybe if Ty, the big Ty, the white Ty can get me a rundown, that would be great so I can get the show going. Um, we got the All-Star Game. That was this weekend that just uh, wrapped up. I'm I'm not really up for it today. Uh, yeah, so my. Maybe you started early today. No, no, you know what? I don't even want to talk about this because it. I started early. All right, I started early because, or actually, everybody else started late. Let's start that way. Right, because the show starts at six o'clock. <laughs> right, we, like we the gotta... show is six to nine a.m. every day, Monday through Friday. What's up, man? How you feeling, Ty? Oh, I'm feeling good. You, you see, Mace has his obey shirt on today. He he's gonna try to to trick us all into uh, his bid. No, Maze is not. Maze is going to let y'all do like y'all want to do. Cause y'all not gonna be worrying me. I've been worried all weekend. It's the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host. He made it in, Ty Stroger. How are you feeling, Ty? I do feel okay. Okay. Yeah. How about you? Uh, I'm. I'm. Like I started out on the right side of the bed, and it's just slowly sliding into descent. Um, <laughs> it is. But I'm gonna tell you what. Uh, it has been an action-packed weekend. The NBA All-Star Game is he was here this weekend. Uh, it was the center of the universe. So I want to say that was a good time. Todd, I saw you on Friday night. Uh, did you have a good time? I did. I, I uh, was with uh, my uh, childhood friend, Jerome Gay. Jerome is, uh, we went to grammar school and high school together. So I've known Jerome forever. Uh, and, uh, you know, sitting around uh, great people with lots of money, like you and the, and the, uh, and the boss. No, the bo the boss don't make no lot of money. That's like she worked a government job, and I'm trying to keep up for everybody. Because <laughs> you know that they only pay man. I'll be like, you you gonna have to get a better job than this. Oh my if, goodness! If we go if we gonna live this life, you got to get a better job than this. But hey, uh, it is the W V O M morning show, so we're all here. We're oh, what? I should also say it was nice to see your daughter. Oh, you that's right. You did see my daughter. My daughter did come. My daughter. Uh, came to the game with us on Friday night to the Rising Stars. Uh, I did not go to the Celebrity All Star Game, uh, but I did kick it at the. Uh, was, that, was that before that game? Yes, it was at Wintrust Arena. I was always I was wondering how they were trying to figure it out. So, uh, Wintrust was like the satellite gym. That was where all the little stuff did. So like they did the practices and everything because wow. you know it takes a lot. I heard it's like thirty something thousand dollars a minute at the United Center to turn that bad boy on. <laughs> like a minute. Like the wow, second, wow. like a minute. Which is why they gotta get that bad. You know what, you know, think about it. When you gotta staff it up and you gotta put all the people in the place, then it, it gets kinda crazy. All right, um, then Todd, this weekend, so I did have a pretty good weekend. I'm just tell you, I'm so thrown off right now. I'm so thrown off. Cause none of our clock is right, right? Like, it's like we did start early. We didn't do no, so I don't know exactly where I am, and I'm still trying to get a rundown. Still, because, uh, you know, we don't have newspapers. So I am trying to get this thing going. Hey, Ty, uh, you know what? Shout out to Leo High School. Leo! I'm like, man, Leo High School. Leo Catholic. Uh, I'm going to tell that's you what. Tomorrow, they, you know what, man? I want to tell you that, so we had a game against Leo, uh, St. Rita versus Leo. Uh, thank you. 
Saint Rita versus Leo, and um, how did Lions it go? versus Mustangs. Yeah, and I was like, it turned out well for a horse. <laughs> it did not. It turned out well on Friday night. It did not turn out so well on Saturday morning. Uh, the game got switched to Leo, and I'm just gonna tell you to my man Paco Hanna. Hey man, we went to Leo, and you know we got there, and they didn't turn on the heat. <laughs> you no. laughing? I was not laughing because we got to the game, and I look. I had my. You know they have a budget. I mean, it's a. No, 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 no. I think it was part of their tactic to beat us. Nah. I feel like, look, man. First of all, we got the. I'm, and now shout out to Shaka and shout out to uh, Paco Hanna because they were there. And I was, you know what? Like we switched the game to Saint uh, to from Saint Rita to Leo. Why though? I mean, you got a. You have a new facility over there. Yeah, we got a really nice gym. It's super nice. Yeah, it's like, nice. and so we. I think you know. I think it was the uh, spread it around. So anyway, Leo is still working on the same one when I was in high school. Man, I was like that gym. Like it's like when you're in the gym, you sit on the floor. Mm-hmm. But it was dope because it said "Welcome to the Lions Den," and I almost went over there and took a picture. But then I would have been like, I'm consorting with the enemy. Right. So anyway, we were at the game. We get there, um, and let me tell you, Todd. So I fat old Maze came out. Old Maze, the heckler. No. So and in a <laughs> small gym, it's like everybody. It's, can hear. it's th- well, they can hear me in any gym. Let me tell you what. Do you know how many uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade games people left where they wanted to fight me? Uh, so you're that parent. I, I am that parent. Like, let's go! You know, I am the one man I can announce from the stands. My voice carries, so, you know, I can be like, he's on fire! You know, I do all that good stuff. So, I, you know, when it's seventh grade, I'd be like, the sixth graders up there trying to shoot a free throw, I'd be like, <laughs> be like ah! and I'd make them all nervous. But anyway, so, you know, and, for, and my voice carries. So I gotta be honest, my voice carries. Um... And we so, talked about people like you yesterday. And I, so I was like, um, yeah, ref, blow the wh- all your whistle works, huh? You know, so I was talking. So then they just stopped giving us any calls. Like, we just got no calls. And I feel bad. But first of all, I was freezing. So I took my, you know, you I have. the ref can kick you out, too. Well, you know what? He needed to kick me out. I'm going to tell you what. I, was, like, I was like, man, he needed to be kicked out. I was like, man, let me see that patch on your on your uh, sleeve. Because what's that, the FHSA? The Fake High School Association? You said that? Oh, I was going off. Oh, you would have gone. I was gone. I was like, you can wait in the car. <laughs> Look, I was going on up. The radio. Listen to the rest of the game on the radio. Look, man. Look, but look, we had a, we had a play where one of the players slid across the floor. Like it literally was like sliding into second base. He slid across the floor. We're like, that's a trap. The whole everybody was waiting for the whistle. And they say it was your team. He looked. No, it was on, uh, on the other team. team. It was on Leo. He looked at me and was like, Nah. <laughs> and they play. Keep playing. Then he got to man. I told Paco I was going to tear uh, Leo up this morning. But you know what? All the black parents at um, all the black parents at the high school at uh, St. Rita, we all said, you know what? We going to chill because this is the first time. What are y'all doing? What is going on? Somebody have a mic on? Hidden keys? What is that? All right. Um, it, I'm, I'm going crazy this morning. Y'all have thrown me completely off. Anyway, so the parents... So, Todd, the parents were, um, we said, you know what, this time we're not going to even complain. You know why we're not going to complain? Because this is the first time the black school got the breaks. And, you know, ordinarily, oh, yeah, yeah. We're, ordinarily, St. Rita's like the blacker of the black schools. Right, right. Yeah, but it was good. Uh, then we went, so Saturday, uh, we went to NBA Crossover. Oh, how was Crossover? You know what, man? It was cool. It's like it was a cool interactive experience, but what I've come to recognize is, that the new idea of fun is not mine. Like, the new idea of fun is to go to all these things that look cool on social media, like, but they're all inanimate objects, right? They all stand still. Like, so the thing is to have the big picture with the NBA All-Star logo and look like you're having a great old time. It's, oh, it's not really But it's really Right, it's like interactive like with you and your phone, which is all you do <laughs> you all phone. the time. Yeah. So I went to NBA Crossover, and let me just tell you, the experience was pretty, I mean, it's a multi-sensory kind of thing, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But I have come to the realization, first of all, Todd, that I'm old. Um, I am not... I said I was going to do this, and, and I said I wanted, and we'll talk about it, but I, I felt like you're chasing, a, sometimes I feel like 
social media has you chasing a moment that doesn't exist. Does that make sense? Like, so I feel like you go to places to say you were there, not to really experience it. And I'm actually starting to feel Are you like at, at your age. Well, no, not at my age. I feel like other other things now. Like, I was thinking about all the interactions, and I think about, like, when I used to travel to all these events before. Mm -hmm. It was like everybody was into the event, Uh not the the pictures that come from the event. Like, you waited till after the event for the pictures. As compared to now, everybody's trying to take a picture to be like, I'm in the now, I'm in the now, I'm in the now, but you're missing. I'm posting. You're posting, but you're missing. And so it's like you go to parties now, and it's like everybody's in their damn phone. Hmm. And it's like it's no fun because it's like there's no, man, you know, I... I it's like getting high to, to put his phone down when we're at a restaurant. Man, it's, it, it is... So I, I'm, we're going to talk about the All-Star Weekend because I'm going to tell you what, it was the best weekend and the worst weekend all at the same time. Because think about while we were downtown having the time of our life. Excuse me, let me be clear. They were on the west side of Chicago. But there wasn't any of all this. And then we take a look on the south side of Chicago where it is the worst weekend that we are seeing in violence where we saw 27 people, was it 25 people shot? 11 of them were children. How many people got shot by accident? Oh, I don't know, but it was a few of them. Yeah, it was quite a few. So, look, we'll talk about it all. Uh, you know what? Did we get the soul plane up? You know how to do that? All right, well, let's do this. Let's get the soul plane up to 50,000 feet. Uh, my girl, La Tierra, is sitting there for Sonia Escobar, and we'll be back after traffic. And we'll go away. We'll be back. More of the morning show. I'm not sure if his earphones don't work or if he's plugged or out now. Who put this together? The other shoe. Lord, 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 Lord. Like me, night shift. New Mucinex night shift fights your worst cold and flu symptoms, like coughing, sneezing, and congestion, so you can sleep great and wake up feeling like a human. 
new Mucinex Night Show. For nighttime cold and flu relief, get relief with super fast delivery. WVON, traffic and weather, now. Traffic is kind of clear this morning due to the President's Day holiday. If you're traveling on the inbound Van Ryan, 95th to downtown, you're looking at 15 minutes. And if you're traveling on the inbound Stevenson, Tri-State to Lakeshore Drive, you're looking at 21 minutes. Inbound Eisenhower from Mannheim to the old post office is 28 minutes. And the outbound Eisenhower, old post office to Mannheim is 30 minutes. And if you're traveling on the CTA Red or Blue Lines this morning, please be aware that there is a stop. Red or Blue Line trains are not stopping at Jackson due to a police investigation from an overnight shooting. And also on the Eisenhower outbound, there is an accident. The left lane is blocked from the old post office. I believe it's looking at 30 minutes. And if you're traveling to O'Hare or Midway, pretty clear traffic. And as for the weather, we have a great start to the week. And there may be some showers coming up a little bit after noon. It is currently 30 degrees, and we're looking for a high of about 39 today. Let's look at our traffic and weather now. I'm Samantha Thomas on 1690 WVON. The WVON lineup, chat room, blogs, photos, podcasts, and more on the World Wide Web at WVON.com. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1698. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd uh, Stroger. Hey, Ty, we were talking about it. It's a tale of two cities this weekend. Uh, it was the best weekend and the worst weekend all at once, and I'm going to be uh, elaborating on that a little bit later on this weekend. But I'm going to tell you, um, it was pretty cool. When we come well, a little bit later, we're going to talk about everybody else's experience regarding uh all-Star Game. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago oh 1698. Goodness, my goodness. You know what? It is clearly Monday. <laughs> clearly a Monday. I was thinking, what is that noise behind it? Uh, but it wasn't behind it. Yeah, I'm going to tell you. All right, so uh, did you see that um, uh, President Trump is talking about now deploying super high-tech tactical teams, uh, ICE teams, into cities, town, uh, to sanctuary cities? Uh, he said he's going to have like military SWAT teams coming in since um, the local elect local communities won't um, won't for sanctuary cities. Also, did you see he is now ending the traveler? Um, you know, like the what's you know when you go through the airport, the global entry system sure, where I'm you can. I've been through the airport in a long time. Oh uh, well, the global entry thing where you can like you can scan and you can like cut through the lines and not have to take your shoes and all that stuff off. Wow. Uh, it's, he's basically saying that if you're a sanctuary city, you can't have that. Well, let me tell you what. That is pretty funny because let me tell you what. I know a lot of people that business travelers that would be like, man, don't let nobody in this country if you're going to slow. If I got to wait in that long. Have you ever waited in them lines at all here? Oh, I, I remember when they first started, Jenny and I went somewhere. It was, a, I want to say it was an hour and a half. It was a long, long wait. Have you ever been in a, a, a line waiting on a plane and some like you in line and somebody feels like they're late and so they be trying to push past you? No, I've never had. Well, uh, never yeah, and they be like, excuse me, excuse me. I'll be like, hey, Joe, you think you're the only one that got to catch a plane? Get your... Wait, yeah, get right. your now you're going to make me late. Right. Because you... I, I mean, I've got to catch... Have you ever noticed, though, one thing about white people? Like, they feel like when it, they... They be like, what? Like... I re have you ever been in a place where white folks are and it's like they act like what rules? Like I mean, yeah, I mean right. I know there are rules, but since it's all you black people, just yeah, man. It's the caste system. I always say there's a caste system. They look at us in a certain way, 
and uh, they feel there's a certain amount of of uh, dignity about themselves. Where yes, I'm above this. I I'm can do what I want. I'm above you, Negroes. All right, um, Todd. You know what? We got to do something on. Oh, like, but you know what you didn't mention what? is that all the men. What's his name? Sancho Lopez? <laughs> no, that's not it. The 25th Ward Alderman went around his neighborhood telling people, you don't have to open the door for ICE. Oh, yeah, they, they've been doing that. Yeah. That's all right. That's why they sending the team to bust it over there. <laughs> hey, okay, don't open it. You're going you gonna to need some new hinges. Well, he said, don't you don't have to open it unless they have a search warrant. I'm going to tell you like this. I'm going to tell you like this. I bet you if President Trump was like, I'm hiring this $65,000 a year local ICE agents and drop them bad boys in the black community. Boy, you give these little brothers some uniforms, they'll about be around here rounding people up. They'll be like, excuse me, your badge, please. Like that. Let me stop. <laughs> I don't know. I think there's a problem. We got a, a, a deep problem with working mm -hmm. in the neighborhoods. We have a deep problem of we're trying to work five days a week. I think we do have that. You, I, you know, one of these days, I want to talk about the... I really want to talk about the reality between like I feel like there's this reality we sometimes I feel like we live in an alternate universe for black people like they talk about all the things we want but it'd be like when I look here now you know dang on well <laughs> dang on well yeah right like sometimes we try to pretend so I, I, I'm a, I think we should have that conversation one day like things that black people need to work on Yes. And be honest with ourselves about because right. everybody is not ready to make all you know what I'm saying? Like every, see I think we need to have a really a reality conversation about the minimum wage and this this uh they when they call a, a living wage fifteen dollars. You heard the mayor Bolingbrook came on here last week like we don't even want no fifteen dollars now. No, no, he's like, yeah, yes. no, thank you. Um and it was like we people took that as a war on they took that as a war on poor people. I mean, I almost feel like that's a war to prevent being having more poor people. You see what I'm saying? Like, as compared, like, I don't think that it's wrong to not want to have more minimum wage jobs. I think, like, you want to have, you want to upwardly, you want jobs that have a path that do not lead to them being in Todd's garage. And $15 Amen an hour with that. four kids, Todd's garage. <laughs> yeah, right. Right? Yeah. And so... Well, actually, to be honest with you, the people who tend to break in the garages are people who, in the old days, we call them hobos. They don't even really work. They're they just, just like, hey, let's all get together and break in three garages this week. Okay! <laughs> Is that how it works? <laughs> oh, yeah, Hobos? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Those, those are the guys who you know in your neighborhood. Be like, hey, the what's up, people Bill? in your neighborhood. And then one day... Uh, the all the rest of the guys that you know, hey Bill, who doesn't uh, really have a job, mm -hmm. break in your garage. Uh, but they still talk to you, and with, they be talking to you with y'all. Speaking of breaking in, did you hear about the? Yeah, you they, know, they come by and ask you if you need your grass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't have more. Well, I just happen to have <laughs> I just one. Happen. I just happen to have one handy. Here. And do you want to buy? Uh, would you like to buy? <laughs> Matter of fact, it looks just like the one you had. I think uh, it's the same model. It's the same model. Yeah, got a half can, half ton gas in it too. Yep. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. It's the WVON Morning Show. Ty, you know one of the other things we gotta talk about? Uh, Lincoln Park High School. We gotta get to the bottom of that. I gotta call my man Devo Robinson and get him on the morning show. Did you see? I think it was uh, Chicago Tonight. Mm -hmm. They talked about it and they said there was a whole bunch of stuff that they they didn't talk about or wouldn't talk about. <laughs> man, I mean the uh, school system. Okay. Um, no, wait a minute, say that again. CPS. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a whole plethora. They had a smorgasbord of charges yeah. that was going down around there. But it seems like there's a wave of coaches and people getting kicked out of schools right now. See, I feel like right now we're about to have an overcorrection. And one of these days we got to figure out what's the balance because there's some yeah. badass kids in these schools. And once you know, they know they can't do nothing to you. Man, I got people calling me like, man, they man, they was like, man, once these kids know you can't do nothing to, to you, they be walking around like daring you, talking crazy. Man, I'm going to tell you. I told you I was at after school matters for like a couple weeks. Uh-huh. These kids, boy, they, I be like, y'all curse. You, you do see me here, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm standing right here. You're cursing. You see me. Right. Right. Uh, man, let's talk Chicago. We'll be back. Traffic, news, weather. I think I
Live from the WVON Newsroom. Here's our. And he went to one of those diamonds stand something, and he said uh, he was always acting up in school. And then his 17th birthday came, and they said uh, the principal wants you to come to the office. He goes to the principal's office. The principal says, uh, Mr. Jones, uh, you are either going to a class every day after school or you were kicked out of the school. Because at 17, you can kick anybody out. <laughs> and he was like, I can't not have anything to do and go tell my parents I can't go to school. I'll go to class. It turned out to be really good for him, but I think a lot of people just would have left. Shit, depending on your parents. Depending on your parents, right. He explained to your parents, man. He said he went to class, and it's like all the other juvenile delinquents were there too. <laughs> Yeah. But that was, you know, that's 20 years ago. All right, y'all, we're about to talk about the All-Star Game and everyone's experience. I want to talk about All-Star Weekend experience in Chicago from top to bottom. It was a very eclectic, man, it was like cold. being at Sundance again. You mean with the, the people? No, not with the people with the activations. Like, like they took over Randolph Fulton Market, and basically what they do is they go into the places, and um, they like went into Randolph Fulton Market, and then they um, like take over stores and store shops and create these pop ups and stuff. But again, it goes back to my point of when you say pop ups, are we, are we talking stores? stores like activations like DJs and you know like everybody's doing promotions all up and down they got uh -huh. parties and all that stuff um I I am um, personally I was think like so I feel like there's a whole set of pressures like if you hmm, I feel like I'm not like, it's like I'm not, I did all this stuff, right? Like, in another life, I did That's all of this. Yeah. And so, it's like, in another life, I did all of this stuff. But at the same time, I understand that people want to, like, I don't know. I don't know. I Like I like I had said one time, I, like the year before, or like the last time I went to an All-Star game or a Super Bowl, I was like, I'm only doing sanctioned events, like, the NBA, this, 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 and this. Like, I could have been happy just going to the game, the All-Star game, like the the Rising Stars, then went to the three-point thing, and then went to the All-Star game and never did anything else. You're not going to Marcus Pfizer's uh, party down the street. Like, I don't have that desire. I don't know. It's just a weird... And so... It's like I feel like there's so there was social media pressure of all these people. Social media pressure of all these people. I'm like, man, the show has started. Like I, get, yeah, I'm through. I don't want to talk no more. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I get I'm electronic done. things. I'm done. I'm I done. don't get the Sun Times though. Hey, who's that lady? I'm crying for the day. Wow. Really? Many Catholic church properties bound to hit the market. I've always wondered about that. We've got a gigantic church. Two, two blocks from us, or a block and a half. What's going to happen to that dang thing? I would buy a Catholic church, but I would be fearful of the screaming souls coming from the basement from all the terrible things they did. <laughs> oh, please, Mr. Nazarenean. They just lynched people. <laughs> Play good old-fashioned, uh, conceptual <laughs> American type of... <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't care about missing out, really.
ain't gonna hurt nobody. Mm. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host to a stranger. Hey Ty, but let me do this. Let me um let me go to the phone lines because we got a caller. Let's go to Mark before I go to the social media question of the day. Mark in Talk Chicago 1690. Hey Maze, hey Ty. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. You know, you when you said you brought up something and I had to call you and comment on it. That minimum wage, man. You know, I I, I what is it, fifteen dollars an hour they're gonna be getting. But here's the thing. It's over it's it's by 2026 or 2025, they'll be at, at, at the top, you know, $15 an hour. So that means, what are you getting, 50 cents, 75 cents increments a year to get up to that amount? Man, by the, these people need this money now. you got to give it to them in kibbles and bits. And then at the end, give them the full thing. By the time it's $15 when they're getting it, they're going to be needing another increase. Who can live off of $15, like you said, when you got a family of four kids. Now let, let me ask, ask a question. question. Let, let me ask, ask you a question, question, Mark. Okay. If you got a, if you ma- if you know you you if you know you ain't even making fifteen dollars an hour, right? Right. How do you get to four kids? What's the plan there? Man, I'm just saying. Cause cause here's the thing. Even when I give you fifteen dollars an hour, and you got four kids, it ain't gonna be enough. That's only two hundred. That's uh, what's that? Thirty thousand dollars a year. That's six hundred dollars a week. Hey Amen. So you know, help me understand. But two hundred fifteen dollars an hour, five bucks an hour, five dollars an hour is two hundred dollars a week. You know, it's it's ridiculous, man. You know they want to, but they want to praise the governor for all all he's giving them. He signed this bill to give them this this uh to ex, ex you know expand the minimum wage, but it's over a four year period. You're not mm. getting it all at one time. Right, but they keep that. And how many more kids is going to be had during that time while you're still waiting on the. Look, Mark, I'm telling you now. The one that has four will have six by the time it reaches the 24th year. And so, guess what? Ain't no fifteen dollar an hour minimum wage gonna save them. We got a whole different issue. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate you. All right, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you. So. I, I mean, I don't want to get down on that tangent right now, right? but I do want to be clear. There is no $15 an hour job that if you have two, man, bro, if you have more than two kids, you need to, you need to finish high school and you need to find a trade. And we need to stop this race to the bottom. Like I, I, I it really just drives me nuts that people are like, that's the fight. Like we're fighting on a race to the bottom. Like, can we all say we don't want none of our people having... Fi- Think about the gravity if we said we don't want no black people to have to have a $15 an hour job. Think about the luxury. You can't even imagine that. So you think of it as a war on poverty or a war on poor people as compared to a fight to make sure that everybody eats. Todd, I don't, I don't, I don't want black people to be looking for $15. I want your kid to be looking for $15 as his starter job, not his final job. Now, you know, I, I always like to bring this elephant up because I think it's important. You know, I, I think we always ignore the elephant in the room for black people, which is the gang culture. You are never going to get anywhere as people if the gang culture is the major part of people's lives. It's not even religion. It's, it's the gang culture. That's the, that's the top of the, of the pyramid for them. I think it's a different gang culture though now, and you said it's the top of the pyramid. Oh, Ty, yeah, I, I, you know how the most hurt you. They gonna be coming to get you after a little later on. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let me go to Jay. Jay, you on the top of Chicago? What you mean? I just, I just got, got disrespectful. Yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for taking my call. Okay. Um, I like listening to you. Um, <laughs> I love listening to you. Thank you. And. I feel like you just got disrespectful to the point where my my eyes started just rolling. I almost forgot your name. Dang, Jay! Who, who are you to tell somebody while well, you having these many children with a certain amount of money? Hold on, dude. This country, you do know, send money, all the cars, the world, 
for a whole lot of other things. And, you know, we got subsidies going to different companies in this country. And if somebody having children, and the, the, your, your, your concern as a black man would, and, and as you say, uh, what it's sending for the black people should be how we're going to educate these people. Dude, you made my, my eyes just start rolling in my head. I'm so, so sorry, Jay, but I gotta tell you, Did brother. you hear yourself? I sure did. Jay, 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 I gotta say this, bro. I gotta say this. Sir, so please. I, I, Are you hearing yourself? I'm 100% hearing myself. Behind that mic. I, well, this is what I'm saying, Jay. I'm saying that $15 an hour. If you're making $15 an hour, can you, if there's no government subsidy for you, right? If the government, forget what the, because we know white folks ain't coming to save us. Do you agree with that? Are white people coming to save us, Jay? Is the government coming Are to you save hearing us? Yourself? Listen to me. I'm asking you a question. Answer no, you, my question. You asking for a point, and your point is really, it, it don't matter when you're talking about a person that is having children, and this company, and, and uh, company. So, so is the person supposed to, to pay for the children? How do you pay for the children? The company, and they're throwing money around to everybody, and you saying that they can't, uh, uh, afford to take care of children, dude. Listen to yourself. I think you gotta listen to yourself on that one, Jay. No, you here's the talk to Chicago. We gotta stop that one right there. Cause here's my per here's my premise, guys. I don't I don't expect that the government is ever gonna come save me. I don't ever expect that they have a responsibility for my children. So let me tell you what. If I got four kids, then I'm probably gonna be working for fifteen dollar an hour jobs. Because I recognize that the cost of a child with a parent is more than $30,000 a year. Do you agree with that, Todd? I do. And so if the cost is more than $30,000 a year and my job only pays me fifteen, how and I cannot depend on the government to subsidize my children, how do I move forward? I'm not fighting $15 an hour. I'm telling you that $15 an hour is not going to save you. Jack Frank, you're on the top of Chicago, 1690. Hey, Frank. good morning, Minister Mays. How you doing, Brother Todd? I'm, I'm, all, all, right. Right. I'm all right. Hey, you know something, uh, Miss Mays? You are 100% right, and I agree with you. But you know what amazes me about all this and people calling and complaining about the $50 an hour? And they're right, because the uh, minimum wage have kept pace with the cost of living rise like they should have in you. So we would really be making right now $22.20 an hour. But you know, these same people, man, will uh, talk bad and call it socialism when the, when they said things like what Donald Trump King Jr. was right. Do you know, uh, Mr. Mays, that Alaska gives his their citizens one thousand dollars a month uh, to the oil industry? That's right, one thousand dollars a month, tax free to help fight um, poverty. Stock in um, California is at five hundred. They just started this. Switzerland does three thousand. What you're trying to move to three thousand. Saudi Arabia does three thirty thirty thousand dollars a year to all their citizens. Can you imagine getting one thousand dollars a year to go to a fifteen hours, whatever you make, to help you not live in poverty? But see, these same people complain about this, but then they want to call stuff like socialism and call that kind of stuff. But let billions of dollars go elsewhere, but they don't want to bag nothing like this. So this is the bed you make in, this is the bed you lay in. So you made this bed, so so sleep in it and stop whining. That's the problem, right? <laughs> That's part of the problem. Well, right well, stay sleep. So stop complaining. <laughs> Stay. Okay, hey Frank, can I tell you something, Sophie? Y'all thousand dollars subsidy. Just so we're clear. Uh -huh. For the thousand dollars subsidy every year, you know what that is a week. Nineteen dollars. No, oh, that's a month. month. Okay, oh, that's nineteen. A month. Okay. Transaction tax to do this a month, not thousand dollars a year. A thousand dollars a month to help you make your everyday basic needs. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said this way back in the '60s. Everyone make eighty-five thousand dollars or less. And started at age of 13 years old. Get $1,000 a month to help them not live in poverty. You put stipulations to this, and you can end crime and violence and gun violence. Okay, thanks, Frank. Uh, let me go to... No, people want more money than that. Well, I was going to say $1,000 is going to make you go. You still want another state. Let me stop. Yeah, I'm going to stop. Ryan, you're on top of Chicago. Ryan, you're on top of Chicago. Hey, hey, good morning, guys. Um, I'm going to make two quick points. I think it was a 1974 started working over at Jewels on um, 87 Day and Ryan, me and a bunch of guys. Uh, you know how long ago that was. We did not stay there. That was a bag and part-time job. Okay? So, 
Now we are pretty much retiring from regular jobs that we were able to take care of our family, but we went to school. That's what men wait, but the guy, Jay, I, I've been listening to you in a long time. That might have been one of the most ridiculous calls I've heard. <laughs> what, and what I, because, of, and it's just so uninformed. Do you all know how many jobs out here that are paying very good business that are unfilled? See, so the fight is not for minimum wage 15. It is to get yourself prepared our young people, and not just young people in general, to get those jobs. Um, the um, skilled union jobs, that's the fight, man. And, 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 and man, you know what? If you have four, four children, three, four children, I don't know how many children you have, and you have very low skills in education, then you know what? You set yourself up for failure, and you deserve that. I have raised my children, but I've worked hard to put myself through school, and again, I'm about to retire. So you know what? We have choices to make. That was just a ridiculous kind of get the education and the skill, and you don't have to fight for fifteen dollars and a minimum wage. Have a good day. Thanks, Ron. I, you know what? I sometimes I think we literally, literally don't know better. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Sometimes I literally think we don't know better, we haven't seen better, and we don't know how to do better. And so we have accepted the floor instead of looking towards the ceiling. Again, I totally agree. I've, I've always said, how are you going to decide that you want to be a, a ceramic engineer? You don't even know what a ceramic engineer is. It's the top of Chicago 1690. Ooh, I guess we do have a new social media question. Uh, minimum wage, will it change your life? It's the Dr. Chicago 1690. More of the morning show. I, 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 to me, like that caller with the, like, do you hear yourself? Yeah. Like, yes, I hear myself. I was, I'm, I was like, really, do you hear yourself? Like, my brother, it's like, I want the best for you. And if you can only see fifteen dollars as the best for you, well, uh, if you look at, at all the numbers, all crazy. the numbers show that people who are poor, people who are homeless, people who are uh, starving—well, I guess starving wouldn't be the right word—but uh, don't have enough to eat don't have a good nutrition, all those numbers are children. They are the population that suffers. Uh, so if you are having four or five children and you can't take care of them, the children suffer. It's not the, uh, the adult who suffers, it's the children who suffer. And then they learn how to survive. They generally learn nothing. But no, they learn how to <laughs> well, survive. You, learn, you always learn something. Right? And they learn how to survive at a subsistence level. Yeah. And so what happens is... There's no space for them to learn anything else. Right, and so they, they descend into this hybrid of... We have like this hybrid thing of drug sales, subsistence drug sales. See, like, I feel like it's like there are people I know for years that have gone to work to sell dope that are like, on. it's like they're out, they, they got a shift. They get up, they go work, they shift. Oh, it's like working minimum wage. They just don't understand that. Right, because yeah. it's in cash. Yeah. So you outside, you work the block, and you work in the jab, and you get $15 off the packet. I'm just saying, per pack. It, it's, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Yeah. But I feel like you live in and and, and use cars. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, you buy not, and you buy. You're definitely not up here, right? It's like the things. Well, you know, I think in some ways, a lot of people who haven't been in uh, anywhere are under the guise that they will not let me do anything. They're under the guise that, that the white foot is on their neck. I mean, I can't believe that somebody would actually be like, we should be able to have, like, okay, so I don't really want to get into this, but like, bro, you got $15 an hour when you have a child and you're having another one? $15 an hour. And 
the fact I like I'm I'm almost appalled at the phone call. Like, cause he was literally offended. Like, you too comfortable behind that mic. Like, he wanted to come do something. <laughs> right? Like, cause I said, like, bro, I didn't say stop having sex. I said be responsible. Stop having children. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And then saying they paying for him in Saudi Arabia, so why mine can't? Have you gotten the South Arabian Saudi Arabian subsidy? No. So what's gonna happen to your kids? They're gonna be in Ty's garage. <laughs> No it's like we got to want better for our kids. Like I just can't be like I would feel like a complete failure if my children wind up making $15 an hour. Yeah. I mean if that's their adult life, that'd be awful. I'm halfway mad if they make it $15 an hour now. <laughs> But as a matter of fact, look what I'm to me. Girl like you, please come true. I really like fantasy. People is falling in love. Together in kind of weather. It's like that. It's like that. Every little step I take. Every little step I make will be together. Every little step I take, you will be there. Every little step I make will be together. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co host, to our children, Ty. This changed well, I gotta up. I tell you, Mage. What up? That video where they just kind of like walking, it was really cool. It, it, it was simple, but you really liked it. Man, it was a great song. I'm gonna tell you, it was off. I, I mean, I, Bobby Brent, that was a that album was on. So I'm gonna tell you, this is exactly. I'm, I got off my All Star thing. We'll talk about it, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like when this was on when we was kid, when we was young, uh -huh. and this came on, everybody was in the club. Into the song. They was yeah. not doing a concert to the song to their phone to their live audience. <laughs> it was like you like you be looking at the people in the club that you're in through your phone. <laughs> right? I'm gonna check this out. I'm not gonna lie. I have I, I, so I have taken the phone. I'm gonna tell you, I was down I was down at Wintrust. Yeah. And I was at the and I could have taken off and I was like it was really kind of like a surreal moment because like everybody's just walking around, they floating. You got, and I found myself trying to look at people through, and it's like, okay, LeBron James is right here, and I'm trying to look at him through the camera lens, and it's like he's all around the camera lens, but I'm trying to, and it was just like, at that, man, it just seems like we are just so disengaged. It's like. You talking to everybody that's not there, and so I was thinking when you said this about this song, I mean when this would come on, everybody would run to the floor, yeah. and everybody be doing their version of it, and, and and now it's just like I know what you mean because after I left the game, mm -hmm. I was like, oh man, I probably should have done some kind of Facebook Live thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what though, because you were probably watching the game. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the thing exactly. I'm gonna tell you what though. I was glad that I caught all of that common stuff. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's go to Mary because I'm going back to this minimum wage. Look, man, I don't want no black people to have to live off the of minimum wage. No, I don't, and I really don't want you to have to live off minimum wage and have multiple children because it's not gonna work very well. Not for the children. Yeah, shoot for the parents. Parents get by. Children suffer. Okay. All right. Let's go to Mary. Mary, you're on Talk Chicago, 1690. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm 71 years old, and I've been wor had worked since I was 16. I'm a retired law enforcement officer. I would like to say it. I'm, my heart goes out <laughs> to people, but people have to learn the decisions you make in your life when you're young. That sets your life. This is a capitalist system. Unfortunately, People get paid for what they can do, not how much you need mm. to support your family. And I, I do agree that fifteen dollars. It's terrible that some of these people have to work two and three jobs. But I worked two and three jobs in my life. But the pre, one of the previous callers, it was absolutely ludicrous <laughs> that at no point during his conversation. <coughs> 
did he indicate that he has any personal responsibility for what situation he finds himself in or what he can do to try to extricate himself from that. And one of the main things you can do is to, if you already are struggling, you should not have any more children, at least not during that period of time. Uh, and, and that's not even in the, the mindset. That, that Mary, I, I have people in I have people in my own family, young people right now who ain't thinking about trying to work. And a lot of the young men, they're living off of their women. The, some of the poor, poor women are trying to get out and earn a living to take care of the kids. But it's just a sad situation. And until we start taking some personal responsibility, and even if you've made some mistakes try to uh, seek uh, how to uh, uh, better yourself. Thanks, Mary. But no, they're sitting back thinking that, um, you know, the, uh, the government and other, the society as a whole, owes you something. I, I'm going to tell you, we we they owe us reparations, but we ain't seen them, so what make you think they're going to save you? Now, I'm going to just well, say... Well, you know, Mary said something that was interesting. She's yeah. right. The, the guys that I know who, like, just did something crazy between 18 and 21 even if when i say crazy i shouldn't say that but even if they fell into the alcoholism shoot i would say 90 percent of those guys never recovered i'm gonna tell you ty though i think like i've gotten um i feel like she ty I, I i don't know if this is wrong but i feel like i would if i had to make 15 if i made 15 dollars an hour then i probably would have three jobs do you understand? Like I would do yeah, whatever it, it won't be. Uh, no, I would do whatever it took to change my circumstances. Recognize, like I feel like there are people who think like when they get a check from the government combined with their mixed income of inside and outside, and they make a total of three thousand dollars a month, they think they balling and they think they got over. And I want them to understand that life is so much fuller. Yeah, there's so, and I'm not talking about just in money. Because I think it's way more than money. The challenge, though, becomes when you think that you think that the floor is the ceiling. Yeah. Like, I think so many people think the floor is the ceiling. Brother Hall, you on the top of Chicago, 1690. Hello. Hello. Hey. Yeah, good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning man. Let, me, let me tell you what I'm serious about. A lot of these young people want to work, man. I place people on jobs every day. The problem is that they're frightened, they're scared. Until we get some control on 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 this mass killing, you know, and even my own son, man, I'm telling you, man, they a lot of them want to work. They, they're just frightened to go in different areas and this, that, and the other. And we need to have a serious conversation about that, man. Okay, well, we're going to talk about that. Um, okay, bro. All right, because I'm going to tell you, we got to go to traffic news and the weather. Y'all keep these calls. I'm going to continue this conversation uh, when we come back. The talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation is 1690 WVON, Berwyn, Chicago. Good old Berwyn. Berwyn. That's funny. I, I, you know, it's hard to, to, to give up the, what you remember. When I think of Berwyn, I think of never in my life would I go to Berwyn. Man, <laughs> they got marketing campaigns now to come to Berwyn. Yeah. Right? You know what I think of Berwyn? When son of Spinguli, Berwin. <laughs> yeah, 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 yep. Every little bit of heartbeat. My man Spike was at Saint Sabina. You were there? No. Hmm. I like me some Spike. Yeah, all these people getting shot. Holy crap. I guess I should try to let it be about 90. I, I owe it to people.
Governor says he saved $225 million. Hmm. I'm sure that's not completely true because I never trust anything like that. Hey Mays, did you uh, did you see uh, President Trump at Daytona? The, did, bee, did, the, did beast, they really? the beast went around the track. That's what I thought it said. Yeah, they drove the beast around the track. It's just come now where I just don't like him. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess that's fine, but I just don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> He's not likable at all to me. Can you show me just so I can watch this right? <laughs> yeah, so you're going to be playing off of uh, this computer here. Mm -hmm. So as long as this is on and off, it'll play. Now make sure that you don't have anything accidentally open. Like if, uh, like if, like Everybody won't be chipping, but they was like... Maybe playing a video or something, because that like would... Sound good. You, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, no. that, that would come through the computer. Yeah, we got to keep an eye on Mary Flowers. She signed on as a chief co-sponsor of our bill, which means I would be prepared for them to put her in there to sabotage it. We got to be careful. I bet you a lot of elected officials who ain't been with us are going to try and use it to be like they own a team for black folks. Yeah, I'm crabby a little bit. Because we do it every day at the same time. Work ethic. My grind is untouchable. I be grumpy because I'm on time. <laughs> they call me a grumpy old man. Ah. It's all right. Okay. I'm going to start showing up later on y'all ass too. <laughs> y'all going to turn on the radio if y'all on time. Be like, oh, I hit the live at 640. Uh, it's good to be the king, even when you're wrong. <laughs> Excellence, 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 excellence. 
What up, Stone? I see you out there. What up, uh, Marshall? We got to connect you in time, Condon, today in Swill. So y'all can go ahead and help him out. I put y'all on the call today. I told him you'd be good for him. I would. I'm not a grumpy old man. I want to rock right now. I'm not basing. I came to get down. I'm not internationally known, but I'm known to rock a microphone because I get stupid. I mean, outrageous. Stay away from me if you're contagious because I'm the man of world music. Because the MC is why I choose the ladies love me. Girls adore me. I mean, even the ones that never saw me like the way that I rhyme at a show. The reason why, man, I don't know. So let's go, cuz. It takes two to make a thing go right. It takes two to make it out of sight. It takes two to make a thing go right. It takes two to make it out of sight. You are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago, 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Taj Children. I've kind of blown my whole little rundown because uh, we got caught up on this conversation and I'm going to take it on until y'all kill it. But uh. uh the fight for 15, right? How, how do we get on this $15 an hour thing? How do we get here? Some squirrel was running <laughs> around, that. rossing across yeah, the yard, so. jumped on a garbage can, hopped up, and the next thing I know, the squirrel was in the studio, and we done went from the all-star game. That was not some squirrel. That was some squirrel that came from my attic. <laughs> <laughs> Damn squirrel. Well, better than a raccoon, man, because raccoons can be some ornery critters. Oh, shoot. They'll you fight you back. You don't want to be in the same room with a raccoon. And a raccoon. They and fight. Raccoon with a raccoon, and then don't let it have no kids. And, I was about to say, the uh, whole family. The fights. whole family <laughs> will be like, God, you get them. Like, like, We're going to get our cousins, hey, and we're coming back. Hey, man, that's like, remember, you ever have one of them fights when you was a shorty? And you was trying to fight somebody and the whole house come out. <laughs> you were, like I remember I used to think I was tough sometimes. I go knock on something. Man, come outside. And here come the whole crib. Everybody. Let me tell you, I told people like this. If you ever came to my house to fight anybody in my house at this point, as we all coming out, but I'm gonna tell somebody put a pot of grease, cook it, burn it, put it on the stove, cause when we get through stomping you, we, we gonna Al Green grit your ass. Oh. <laughs> I'll be like, cook it all. I want some oatmeal. Have you ever had oatmeal stick to you when you cooking it? Actually, and it's I have, hot. But it's and that bad boy will not get off. It'd be like, yeah. Okay. So anyway, speaking of squirrels, we were on squirrels. So Todd, man, my brother called up. What? I don't even remember what his name was. I thought we was boys. He was like, I listen to you all the time. I used to love listening to you. Then he said he was sitting in his chair, made his eyes roll back, said maybe I had gotten too comfortable behind this mic. And I was like, if you know what I get paid, y'all wouldn't be that comfortable. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, yo, I, 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 I know what it is. I said I want black, I don't want black people to be fighting for the least. I want them, we was talking about how the minimum wage and the mayor in Bolingbroke said he didn't want no more minimum wage jobs. Yeah, and yeah, people yeah. were saying that it was a, he doesn't want poor people. And he was like, he ain't trying to create more poor people. That's right. Right? And 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 it seems like we, we don't even, in my estimation, understand that there's a better, there's some, in our community, there's a level of people this is not a diss, but they have not seen or experienced the fruits of life. And let, let me give you an example. And I'm not, I don't want to make, but like if, if you've probably never been on vacation, like at $15 an hour, your child is probably not going on vacation. Right? right. They're probably not going to see much outside of their neighborhood, which is going to keep them confined. 
I don't want you to be fighting to get a $15 an hour job, black people. I want your kid to start at $15 an hour. And I want you to be making a salary that allows you to provide for your children. But if you make $15 an hour, the reality is you can't afford four kids. No, you just can't. That's, that's now, you might say the government can afford four kids, <laughs> yeah. but you personally cannot. Let me go to Marvin. Marvin, you on the Talk of Chicago, 1690. Marvin? Hey, Mace. Hey, uh, Todd. How y'all doing? Good morning, doing? Marvin. What's up, Marvin? Yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, I don't think that many many of these people in power really want to see us be successful because their priorities are all wrong. Uh, why would they want to educate your kids if they figure that they could keep them in a, you know, get them in a prison industrial complex? Why uh, allow them to close down the schools? Um, I mean, the classes like electrician and uh, Simeon and, you know, with the trade unions and things, and, uh, automotive classes, where if a kid has an option to go to school, um, you know, to to work with the unions, which we did this at one point. Uh, I mean, to to come out with a certification can make thirty five dollars an hour as an electrician or a plumber or something, uh, versus going to uh, college and you know being in seventy thousand dollars in debt for uh, for a degree. If they had more options. You know, we, we could reduce poverty, but I don't think those in power want to do that. So if you have thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 for an inmate a year, you know, for Wall Street investing in prisons, I think we're, we're in a government that wants to exploit people more than help people. So it's in their interest to keep people poor so they can exploit them. That's what I believe is where we are. Thanks, Marvin. I guess my question is, do you have to walk through that door? Like, I don't ever think that anybody is planning for us to succeed. And so I think I go into the game knowing that they're not. Now, do you think when you play an NBA basketball game, the other team wants you to win? No. <laughs> no. The whole point of sports is this competition. But you know what? I was watching, and um, this is going to be like art imitates life. So I was flipping through the channel, and I see Fievel. Remember Fievel? The mouse? mouse? Yes. Yeah. And I was like, what is this really about? Because I never watched it. So I looked it up. And Fievel's family moves from Russia to New York because they were looking for a better life. I think our people have kind of lost that desire for how do I find the better life. Yeah, I feel like we've sunken into the place where we accept that this is our reality as a permanent underclass, and I just don't go for that. Yeah. I think that I I think that there's a point like in Maze Jackson, and I and I and I feel like this may even be. A fundamental challenge in teaching like I know uh, Salim said people used to have a lot of kids because it was an agrarian society and they needed to go pick the corn and all that true but we, don't do that, no we don't do that anymore but I think like there's this concept in our neighborhood that you can have as many babies as you want and some kind of way mysteriously somebody's gonna if somebody's going to take care of them right. and when the brother starts talking about what they're doing in Saudi Arabia I got to say to myself are we in are we operating in the same space and do people actually think that they should have children that the government is responsible for paying for? Mm -hmm. Like, is that, I mean, like, I'm curious. I mean, because he was dead serious. He was, like, offended that I was saying, like, Todd, I'm not saying, like, you can't have children. I'm saying, though, that they're, children are not free. No. And they cost. And they cannot take care of themselves. And. You I, know what Han said to me? I think I told the story once. I don't know where we're going. And Han said, well, who's going to take care of us? <laughs> this, this was, you know, some years back. And and like, I, I, no, I'll be here to take care of And I, You know, I got to disagree with my man who just called. I mean, I think that there's a certain point we got to start talking about the work ethic. Right, because I don't right. think everybody wants to work. I think everybody wants to get a check, and it sounds good. Yeah. But everybody doesn't want to work. Maybe and even those first few days on the job may seem great, but that third day, mm -hmm. uh oh. And and again, I, even when we go to work, it's like our attitude towards work. So like, I used to go to McDonald's. I worked at McDonald's. I tell you what, I learned the best stuff at McDonald's. I did. And I'm telling you, it taught me life skills that I learned, that I use today. Mm -hmm. But I think about going to McDonald's and um, being there and saying that when I get to this job, I'm going to be the top 
whatever it is that I'm going to be. Because somewhere in here, I'm not going to be here. Right? So when I went to McDonald's, I started out and I said, what does that guy do over there? He's the, 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 crew, uh, the crew trainer. Does he make more? Does he get to go and he gets better stuff? I want to be a crew trainer. Then the next thing was, what's that dude do over there right there? Him? He's a crew chief. And what? He gets to tell everybody what to do. And he makes extra money. I want to do that too. Then I saw... Maze wanted to be on the fries. Uh, man, I, I, man, I had to leave fries. Fries was late because they wouldn't let me put enough salt on them. The challenge is, though, the challenge is, is that if you don't see or want to climb, I think about all the people that go to McDonald's, and I was the person that everybody made fun of me because I washed my uniform every day. I ironed my shirt. I ironed my pants. My McDonald's uniform. Ironed it. Right? I made sure my shoes were Man, polished. I, I had know they, they would take creases. I, I always thought they were just a sloppy looking thing. And so, and people would laugh at me, and all the brothers would laugh at me, but all the people kept finding themselves working for me. Right? right? Like all the people that I was with, and my guys, we would kick it, and then I'd be like, uh, but I need you to get on the fries. And, the, and I don't know if we teach our children. To, and I'm going to say this even my own kids. I'm a little guilty of not pushing them as hard as they like, man, bro. It wasn't no sleep until in my house. When, growing up, you didn't sleep till no ten o'clock. Oh no, and you wasn't even watching no cartoons till they picked up all the sticks in the yard. I'm like, it's a tree. Stick, sticks are gonna fall all the time. <laughs> well, you better go pick them all up. And I'd be like, I was like, fuzzle, 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 fuzzle. But it was the climb. It 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 put the climb in me. Right. And I don't know if our children have to climb. And when our parents say, man, you can have kids on $15 an hour, you are not setting yourself up for reality, and you're not setting yourself up for success. Let's talk to Chicago 1690. We'll be back. More of The Morning Show with Ray Jackson coming up. I mean, where does... I'm, I'm not tripping, and millennials don't have a work ethic because it's an app for every goddamn thing. Mm-hmm. 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 
clear. The inbound speed is... We're not going to put everybody in a box. <laughs> no, not everybody. Man, I'm going to tell you what. Every Uber driver I had this weekend was Asian. Because hmm. they was like, we getting all this money. While all the Negroes was riding in the Ubers, the Asians was like, <coughs> I saw you standing and I started started pretending that I knew you you knew me too <laughs> and just like a Rony you were too shy but you weren't the only cause so was I and I dreamed of you ever since How I built up my confidence And next, next time you come my way I know just what to say Can we talk for a minute? Girl, I want to know your name. Can we talk for a minute? Girl, I know to know your name. <clears throat> I started to write you letters, but I wanted to be more clever. I want it to get down and sweet talk you. Yeah, baby. But just like a baby, I could not talk. I'm coming. And I tried to come closer, but could not walk. And now I drink of it every night. How I just could not get it right oh if we ever come close again i know what i'll say then. you are tuned in to the talk of chicago 16 90 a.m i'm your host mage jackson got my co-host Ty's children man that song gets me every time tevin tevin went so hard with that you know what let me tell you something you hear that that right there is why Lovey AJ got her head handed to her. It's a post on it's a Facebook meme and it says Tevin Campbell show put his foot in can we talk? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, he put it and I'm telling you when you came for Tevin, everybody remember baby Tevin. Remember when he first came out with that little song and everybody was like, Who is he? And it was all good. Alright, y'all sub Chicago 16 million DM. Um, let me ask you though. Fifteen dollars an hour, they call that a living wage. Should you expect that for fifteen dollars an hour you can raise a family and if you can't, what's the government's responsibility? Like uh -huh. what's the government's responsibility? Fifteen dollars an hour, four uh -huh. kids. Who is that on? Who bears the responsibility of two, three, and four? I'll give you one. But two, three, and four? Who bears the responsibility? Let's go to Art. Art, you on Talk Chicago 1690. Arturo. Hey, what's going on, young brothers? How are you doing this morning? Oh, we good, Art. Right. All right, first of all, the two calls before young ladies was 1,000% right. Maze, you 1,000% right. And, and, and Todd, you are too. Uh, the other caller, what's his name? I, I don't know what you're talking about. People are um, scared to get up and go to work because of fear of whatever. <laughs> Crap. I've been in business for 40 years doing general home remodeling, and most people, most of them, men and women, 
that don't want to work. They want something for nothing. They come there feeling that you owe them something. And because they chose to live a certain lifestyle, now they want to get themselves together to some form or degree. They feel they should be paid based on what their expenses are, not based on your qualifications and, and what you what you earn from basically what your knowledge are. So, you know, this is just foolishness. It is personal responsibility. It is not the government responsibility to raise your children. I have a daughter, she just, she's pregnant now, and at the end of the day, you know, she's in college, and I said, do you know this is going to be extremely difficult for you? I tell her this all the time, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, it's a choice that you made, I'm going to support you the best that I can, but at the end of the day, this is going to be an extremely difficult task, and most people do not want to give up their personal life or what they're doing to get up and go to work. So I leave you with that and may God continue to bless. But let nobody tell you there's no jobs out here. And $15 cannot, cannot, and will not take care of no family. That was for people who was in school, high school, grammar school, and some college. That's what it was designed for, not for grown people trying to raise their family. Leave you with that and may God continue to bless. Thank, Thank you, Art. Um, I don't think um, it's most. Can I start here? I don't think that it's most black people. I think that most black people are going to work. I think that most black people, I mean, because I don't, fundamentally, I don't believe we can survive on the government, like the government just carrying our whole race. I don't. But I do believe that there is a certain segment of the population that has never really seen people go to work. Mm. They don't understand. Like, I've talked to people who thought that their subsidized housing or their house was theirs and that the check that the government sent was owed to them. Now, right. I, not owed to them as in the sense of reparations, but owed to them in the sense of, hey man, you, I'm waiting on my check. Like that mother could never, what happened if it don't come? And I, I just guess my concern is that when we think that $15 an hour is going to be a panacea for our community. It's not. And $15 an hour is only going to make you know what you ain't got. Yeah. I remember Vince Lane saying that a lady uh, stood up in a meeting and said, I've been paying $64 a month for four years. I should own this uh, place. Well, shoot. Nobody's ever owned anything for $64 a month. But I think we have, a, oh, you know what? Hey, Todd. Yeah. It's time. It's time for your amazing black fat. You know what? I'm going to tell y'all what y'all going to do. Y'all going to stop setting me up. Did, look, did, this will be. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to breathe, right? Hey, think of Sigma colors. Blue. blue and white. Mostly blue. 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 Good morning, Mays. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, Louis. Uh, we don't have a, a ethic problem as far as working. What we have is is a, is a problem finding work. Okay, uh, they got projects, they got construction going on in our community right now, but ain't nobody in our community working on those construction projects. You got Hispanics out there, and you got uh, you got Caucasians out there working those uh, projects. Okay, our problem is is that uh, we got uh, uh, Sterling Bay is supposed to have a two point seven billion dollar contract. Uh, uh, what is a uh, uh, project seventy eight? It's supposed to be a seven billion dollar project. Okay, you always ask this question, and th and this is your these are your words. What's in it for the black person? I gotta stop okay. right there, Louis. Okay, I gotta okay, stop you. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, Don't argue with me. Hold on. We'll be right back. Damn. Live from the WBO. So, um, I'm not going to say that there aren't. First of all, I think we got to stop having, I think we keep fighting over the same, like, construction projects. Check this out. The people who are prepared to work construction are working construction at this point. What you're fighting for now are the laborer sweep jobs, right? That's what you're fighting for. That's really what they're fighting for. Because the people that do construction that are black are working. They do. 
Now, what you got now showing up to the construction sites no, are no, the no. people. I think he's fighting for the um, the school. I mean, you know, the training program. You know, actually getting into. Yeah, but I'm saying, have you? Okay. IBW. So Carrie's gonna come out with hers because she just did a training program with IBW and the black. Oh, let me shut up. I can't talk about. It. But my point is, the people that want to work find a way to work. The people who don't want to work find a way not to work. Now, I think people who think they want to work but have never worked and have never seen somebody really have to work and work hard don't understand that that's part of it. Like, so, I think people go to work at McDonald's and I remember I was saying I ironed my uniform, washed it, did all that stuff. Yeah. Right? There are other people who will come to work and their uniform would be filthy. They would wear it. They wouldn't care. They would stink. All of that. Right? To me, my parents wouldn't let me leave the house like that. Oh, gotcha. So, <laughs> there's a point when somebody hasn't even shown you that. Right? So, now that person goes to McDonald's and they already don't present. Then... Where I say, hey, welcome to McDonald's. How might I take your order with a smile? They be like, anybody doing that dumb shit? I got to come here and do this, man. And it's the wheat and the chafe. And then the people that go to the back, and then they go to, first they go to burgers, then they go to dishes, then they quit. Because the second you tell them they got to go clean the bathroom, they like, I don't pay me enough to go do that. Right? I think... A lot of people have not had to, like at work, you don't get to do what you want to do. And that's part of what people think. Like, I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I think there's rules. I think there's a whole set of stuff that prepares you to go to work. And oftentimes, the people are expected, like if you have to go to a training program to get a job, like if the uh, training program sponsored by the employer to get the job, mm -hmm. the odds are not that you're going to get that job, keep that job. Nah. Right? Like if you weren't already interested in being in the industry, if you didn't go out and seek it yourself, if the only reason you're coming to the job training program is because they pay you to come to the job training program, and once they stop paying you to, to they're paying you to get your job. It's like. If I wanted to be a tradesman and the application fee was $100, but I knew I could make $100,000 a year in five years, I would come up with $100. Right. You, the thing is, they will t like so people will say, we couldn't pay the $20 application fee, and then we go sell that to the unions as they all dropped out because they couldn't pay the application fee. So then they say, well, we would have put the money up for the application fee, $20, and then you still don't get nothing. See, like my thing is, we're fighting. I think there's a, a group of people at a time of high employment, like right now, it's people saying, I'm not doing that, I'm not doing that, I'm not doing that, I'm not doing that. And I'm comfortable not doing it because I have a fallback. I don't have a fallback. Mm -hmm. I, if I, man, my kids don't eat, I gotta work. Mm -hmm. I do. And it's like people, and so I put myself in a position to climb, even though I didn't get a college degree, I had to work a lot harder. Power of I. Break. We literally just got that within the past two minutes. It's par for the course. Par for the course. Everybody does everything last minute. I'm just start showing up at three minutes after the hour too. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. You can't show up three minutes. Yeah, after sure the hour. I should. You put, I mean, the, you put the show together. I'm not the producer. I'm. I mean, we're all a team. I guess that's true. I I show up here every day. An hour and a half before everything. I'm happy. A lot. I, I would just like to. Yeah, I think it would be a re simple request. Can you say Showtime would have worked if uh, Cooper said, I'm going to do the pass? And, no. You like the pass. People get out of their way so you can pass. Okay. But I think we all have to be at the game. And I think that Cooper can't pass the ball if there's nobody to pass the ball to. 
in a game. And I think that there are also, like, there's days when it's a team and everybody's working hard. And, man, I'm saying, like, Jesus. Um, it To me, regardless of all that, I like to do all of it. And I don't trip. But I think at, if we got a new news person coming in, nobody knows, at least be here to make sure that they know what's going on. We don't have, Sonya's not going to be here. Somebody's got to take, like, I got all, everything else. Everything else. I'm just saying, like, get a rundown. It's all good, though. I'm not tripping. I It's a Monday. I had a bad Monday. And it's like, it's just one more time. It's like, if you I have a, had a bad Monday, it's only. But I've had a bad it's Monday. It's <laughs> It's half my day is over. Half my work day is over. You do and stuff when you leave. Half as it relates to this, so it relates to this, yeah, right. And so you get here and you and it's like everybody is like whatever. Nobody takes the show serious. That's okay. It's all right. It's all right. So today I had I went out this weekend and I had a, a shortcoming. Right. Fortunately, what I know is that regardless of if I have a, a long night, I still better get my ass up here because if if I if I would have fell, they would have been like, but it's out there. I'm through. I had to have my rant. <sighs> uh -oh. I mean, I do all the big stuff. Everywhere. Just the little things. Wrong movie, Dad. You are too... You are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. We're going back to you, Lewis. Lewis, you were saying? Hi, Go you. ahead, Lewis. Turn that radio down. Yeah. Lordy <laughs> Jesus. Let's hold put Lewis on hold. Mama D, you're on the top of Chicago, 1690. Oh my God. Good, Good morning. morning. Article called Blacks and Welfare Crisis and predicted that the day would come when blacks would work in exchange for a welfare check and that they were headed for slavery 1971 style. The Personal Responsibility Act eliminated payments to uh, families uh, with um, born to unwed mothers younger than 18. Uh, it was a block grant uh, to establish group homes for unwed mothers and all that kind of stuff and said that by fiscal year 2003, 50% of AFDC recipients would be working in exchange for a welfare check. Now, my question is, what are these young boys, uh, in first place, you're birth controlling the wrong one. Women can only bring forth a baby once a year in nine months. A boy can bring home 365 babies in one single year if he changes he body triple that, actually. every day. But my question is, what are they being taught? Are they being taught that seed is sacred and that there are no wild, there are no fields for them to sow wild oats in? Hmm. I'm not sure what they're being taught, Mama D. Let's go back to Lewis. Lewis, you're on top of Chicago. Lewis? Oh, hello. Hey, May. You got it? Let's go, man. Okay, what we're missing out on is, okay, like I was saying, uh, Sterling Bay has $2.4 billion, uh, Project 78. Seven billion dollars. The governor just said that he he, got, he has an infrastructure bill that's going to be forty-five billion dollars. Okay, and, and just like you always say, uh, what's in it for the black person? Okay, uh, what we have to do, we have to look at it, is where those contracts at. You know, those contracts are not coming out to our community to enhance the uh, black people. You know, and so by not being 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 able to. Uh, Okay, you got two things. You got a minimum wage and you got a livable wage. Okay, what we need to be looking at, we need to be looking at the livable wage. And the only way we can get that livable wage is, is that we got to have those contracts. And uh, the city doesn't tell you how, what's the percentage 
of uh, contracts that are awarded to black vendors, suppliers, or uh, people of. So look, Lewis, I gotta go because you, you've been we going through that. Check this out. Um, I'm with you on the contracts, and what, you know I ask what's enough for the black people all the time, guys. But again, we're protesting, not building. And I think that, I'm going to tell you like this, I think that most of the people that know how to, black people that know how to do construction are already doing it. I think the people that are protesting not working on the job sites probably still need to be trained to work on those job sites. Let's be clear that we're not, the people that are at the front of the protest movement are not looking to climb on the cranes, right? And I guess my other question is, how many are we looking just at construction? See, I feel like we get, when you say Sterling Bay, we all lined up talking about them contracts. What contracts are you talking about? Which ones? The accounting oh, yeah. firms? Because there's going to be a ton of them. It's a ton of them. But which ones? Have you lined out and specifically lined out the firm? Because what happens is the, the opportunities is usually for the bougie Negroes, right? The bougie Negroes who went to school get in trouble because... They well, I will I will push back on that because okay. I would say that in the professional fields, uh, African Americans don't they still don't get their share. That's my point though. But I'm saying like if you want to fight with Sterling Bay, why are we fighting with Sterling Bay for jobs that we know we don't have people to fill, right? So uh, again, why not fight for the accounting law, all the other pieces that go to that, the professional services, and then start to look at it. I'm telling you that the challenge... I'm telling you that, that the problem is deeper than this. Our problem really lies, and I'm, I'm going to say it again, our problem lies with the gang culture that permeates so many of the neighborhoods. Until you get past that, you, you can't get... You, it's hard to, to get the children to build their foundation. Because you can always say you're going to training this and that. But if you don't have a foundation, you're going to get there and you're going to get upset because you can't do it. All right. You know what? Casey, you're on the top of Chicago, 1690. Casey's gone? taking my call. Thank you, Casey. Go ahead. Can you hear me? I can yes, hear sir. you. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, you were just talking to uh, Mama D. She said something about uh, a man could have a baby 365 days or something like that. And you said that can be tripled. What are you talking about, mules, or are we talking about black people? I mean, it sounds like, um... Bro, you can have sex more than three times a day. That's what yeah, I was saying. Yeah, move on, but move on. How disrespectful. That's you know, that reminded me of something I was thinking about when you said that. <laughs> Come but on, man. That does happen. That I mean, that gets to the point of, because you asked the question, what are we teaching or something like that, is what we're teaching our, our, or somebody teaching our young men is that women are more like uh, motels and hotels. You rent them and then you're gone. There, there's no true we are in this together stuff, which is why so many people either break up or never get married. The $40, you seen the $40 dress thing going on and all that stuff, and then you listen to, like I was listening to the Megan Thee Stallion thing the other day and I was appalled at what I was hearing, the girl saying, if you want to get the blah, 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 you got to buy me such and such, and I'm still, and I, be, and I was just like, Again, 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 that is a race to the bottom. I don't want to sound like C. Dolores Tucker or Calvin Butts. Let me go to Rico. Rico, you're on top of Chicago. Do you need more than $15 an hour to provide for a family? Rico? Rico is gone. Todd, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm incorrect. I, you know what, y'all? I obviously have... Maybe, I'm, maybe I have... You have high desires. You've always I want our desires. people to do better, bro. I want our people to not feel like $15 is going to save us. I want us to shoot for the stars, not settle for the minimum. I know so many guys who, I guess it goes back to that, you kind of missed your, the boat when you were young, and then they get older, and they're hoping that they don't make too much money because of the cut into their SSI. Uh, yeah. See, but that's my point. Like, or people say, don't pay. I don't want to make two thousand dollars a week because you might mess up my stamp. I'm like, if you use the two thousand dollars a week, you won't need the stamps, <laughs> and you gotta have money over. <laughs> Brian, you're on top of Chicago, sixteen ninety. Brian. Hello. Good morning. What's Good morning, up, Brian? Hello. Hello? Yeah, let me tell you something. To me, the Democratic Party is hypocritical. On one hand, they're advertising 
15 bucks an hour minimum wage, but they, on the other hand, they advertise an open border flooding in the country with a bunch of cheap labor, but you don't really get that. And what they're doing, they got black people turned on the social program by cheap, by cheap immigrants flood the border and get their construction jobs and stuff. So to me, Democrats are hypocrites with that minimum wage raise. Thanks for hearing me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, the problem with that is black people aren't fighting to be uh, part of the, the group putting up uh, or taking down as, uh, asbestos, <laughs> you know? I mean, these jobs are not fighting to, to, uh, to cut grass. No, they don't want those jobs. They want something bigger. Uh, but you got to you got to do something to do something bigger, right? You got to, I mean, like, okay, let's just be clear. There's, a, well, actually, not even in this, in this world right now, if you, you, they can train you to do anything you want, they want you to do. Yeah. You can turn on a YouTube video, they will put you, because the way technology moves right now, they will train you to do whatever. I literally just looked at a YouTube video to, to see how to, to put a patch on a wall that had a hole in it. Did you do it? Uh, did not yet, but I'm like, this, this, this is simple. simple. Right. <laughs> you put it up, you mud it, then you put the, I'm telling you, cut yeah. your piece. You, I, what I'm suggesting is that, at, at okay, if you are at $15 an hour, that is not a livable wage for a family. Don't believe the hype. If you think that when they raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour and you have multiple children or most shoot, one child, it's not going to be enough. Right. And our plan needs to, to survive needs to not include government subsidy. That's all I'm suggesting. So top of Chicago, 1690, we'll be back. It's like if you're figuring the subsidy into your game plan, that's the point. It's like that's the permanence. Like if you have that as your income, that's a challenge. Yeah. That's my like everybody wants to start as do y'all understand this progression? Like progression in everything. Like you I man, you don't start out making a hundred thousand dollars a year. You start out making I started out making forty five, went down to eighteen thousand dollars a year. But I had a plan, so I knew I was. But I tell you what, I didn't have no kids while I was making eighteen thousand dollars a year. Right. Now, when we made twenty eight, then it was like, okay, we can maybe make some space. But again, it was never, never in any of my plans for my family. Does it include the government helping me take care of them? Right. I'm not saying that I could never fall. I'm not saying that I could never need government assistance. However, however, in the need for government assistance, that I would be doing everything I could the same day to get off. The same day. You have the care. Yeah, yeah. My, I mean, I totally agree with Maeve. Uh, I've always thought that what made some of these other neighborhoods uh, their children do better was a twofold thing. One is they they had people in the neighborhood who would do well. And that they would help their their neighbors, their neighbors' children, such that kind of stuff. You know, good to know somebody. I remember the majority leader in the house told a story once. Uh, he's older. He, he he was in Vietnam. It, he was from Alton, down way down south. I mean, you know, practically falling out the state once you get that far down. And he said that his father was a, a union guy. I think he was a carpenter. And this guy had a black friend, Jimmy. And he asked his father, how come Jimmy can't get in the carpenter's union? And his father said, do you want Jimmy to get in the carpenter's union? Or do you want your cousin Robert to get in the carpenter's union? 
So it became a fight between their people and people who weren't part of their group. By blood or, or neighborhood, it doesn't really matter, I guess, but most of blood, you start with blood. And that has been, so the unions, as we see it, the skilled labor ones, you know, that's a democracy. They vote on everything. They vote on their leaders. So as long as the group is mostly uh, white and probably Irish, do you think they're going to give up that leadership or vote in someone who's going to say, all right, we're going to expand, we're going to hire fewer or bring in fewer people who come from our neighborhoods and who are our relatives and bring in more minorities who've never had a chance, you know. And that's just probably not never going to happen. It has to be forced. And to be honest with you, the, the, uh, the black elected officials tried to force the issue once. The black caucus was voting against the skilled labor issues. <laughs> they were trying to put pressure up here at the county. Uh, we had a big conference with Emil Jones and all everybody. Everybody was there. My dad. Uh, it went on a couple of years. I, I don't know why it lost its steam. You know, things start to happen and in, in, in politics, they can get in the way. Um, I would think maybe one of the things that might have uh, gotten away was that uh, Barack Obama was running for the Senate, so all the attention started to focus that way. So we find ourselves pretty much in the same space. A lot of promises, not a lot of results. Pretty brown eyes. <laughs> I think you're right, Celine. Breaking my heart. Keep brown eyes. Oh. You are tuned in to Tip Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. And I don't forget, coming up at 8 o'clock, we are going to have uh, Miss Amisha Cross with the Washington, D.C. update. I don't know how this conversation wound up dominating this whole show like this. But I don't, and I guess I don't want to come off as classist. I want to come off as self-reliant. Like... I fundamentally would want black people to be in a place where the government does not figure into how we raise or provide for our families. Does that make sense? Like, I don't care what they do in Saudi Arabia. I don't care. I want every black child to have the resources that they need. Now, I'm not saying that every black child has to be born rich, silver spoon in their mouth, but there are basic necessities. And if your life plan includes a the government figured into your final math to, for your family, and I'm not talking about your tax return, I'm talking about you are calculating benefits for the children, etc. That is not a place I want any black people to reside. It's not that that's not needed, 
But that is not where I want you. I want you to live in the fullness and the abundance of your life that you are supposed to. And I don't want to take away nobody's check. I just want you to have a bigger check. Is that? I don't. I, I'm all with you. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand how there's even a beef to that. No, I, I don't. Uh, well, I think people are short-sighted. I go back to it's hard to to uh, achieve things you can't uh, actually see. You know, Reverend Jackson was saying this when I was a kid about being able to uh, achieve things by dreaming. I think some people just can't can't dream that far. They they just can't see that vision. I can be bigger than this. I can be great. Yeah, I I I just I. I guess I didn't know that this was offensive. I didn't know that wanting us to not need government resources to provide for ourselves was a bad thing. I didn't think it was classes. I'm not trying to diss nobody. I'm not. Everybody's not at the same level. But my goal is to help us understand that why they got us believing that a fight for a 15 is going to be a panacea it's really only going to be a race to the bottom like I don't even want you looking at the 15 I want that to be a floor I want you to stand on that 15 and say where do I go from here right bounce off of it and right in the 15 I want you doing $15 an hour at 16 I don't want you doing $15 an hour at 40 I don't not in making a plan okay Milton you're on top of Chicago 16 90. Hello? Hello? Hey, Milton. Yeah, how you doing? I'm good, man. I'm, a, I'm feeling some kind of way. Black people are stupid. Stupid? B what? Stupid. Why, because Milton? They believe. They believe everything the white man tells them. They believe that the black man makes, the white man takes. The black man makes money. The government is money. The are uh, the people. The people are the government. All the money that it, the government has comes from the man, the working people. The the, the they are taxes. Okay, I take that. It's no. your money. I agree with it's that. Your money. But I, I, let me say this: It's your money. Luke Milton says it's your money. I'm cool. I just don't want it in a check like that. <laughs> right. Like I don't want mine giving back to me piecemeal. No. No. Mm -mm. No. That's what I always say. People get excited because George Bush sent you three hundred dollars. That's that's not real money. If he'd sent. Uh, yes, three hundred dollars is real money. It depends on where. You, see, that's the problem. Tyler, fifteen dollars an hour is a ceiling for you. A three hundred dollar check is a lot. Well, yeah, but it's it's real money if you sent thirty million to Seaway Bank and said Seaway Bank, you can only give these loans out within a, a, a two-mile radius. Well, mm. uh, yeah, and you know what? They'll be like, where's Hegwish? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you, they'll, find, they'll be like, well, if you take the shortcut, now they'll be like, you got to take a road, or can we draw a straight line to it? Because we can draw a circle around it. All right, uh, you know, do I got time for Antonio? Do I have time for him? If I, I don't think I got time for him. Do I have time for him? I'm sorry, Antonio, you hold on. We'll get you when we come back. Salim says... Though it makes sense that uh, the government is already implicated in denying resources to the children of slavery. And there's a primary reason why we're on the lowest rung. I'm with you on that. So give us reparations. But don't tell me it's a welfare check and then tell me that that's how I'm supposed to feel, be feeling good about myself. Stop Chicago 1690. Nearly two weeks of quarantine in Japan on a cruise ship. So, so let me ask you a question. Are we better or worse economically as black people? Since segregation. I bet there was some more black millionaires. And I bet you still can't um, walk around some of these neighborhoods. I'm going to stop though. I'd like to build the uber black neighborhood. Where it's black. Like I would love to have. Like I was driving down Halsted. Yesterday. And it's like. I was on Halsted and it was like restaurants. Little bitty restaurants. Butcher shops. Everything. You could walk down a block and you could get everything you needed on that block. Mm -hmm. All little white quaint shops, the whole thing. 
I used to feel that way about my neighbor. Oh man, your neighbor, man, it used to be a time. I remember when I was a kid and my um, grandmother lived at 8727 South Constance, right? So I used to love walking from Constance to Stony because it was just so much stuff. I learned how to play Galaga at that 7 Eleven mm-hmm. right there. Yeah. It used to, wasn't a 7 Eleven? It, it, it was uh, something, but it, it was a 7 Eleven and it was owned by a black franchise. Because my neighbor, Tony, used to work there because his uncle was the franchise. Man, and we, all up and down that strip, right? And it used to be like, I remember shopping. You know, I owned uh, Wesley Shoes for a minute over there. Yeah, you told me that. Yeah, it ran me out of business. The, the uh, Arabs ran me out of business. Price class? No, they basically told all of the, the 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 clothing manufacturers if they they were buying as a group, and if, if they sold me any of the brands that they wanted, then they would not buy that yeah, brand. Wise, so yeah. And so I would have to drive to New York to go buy clothes and drive them back. Yeah, just like what the the Chinese did with uh, uh, the young lady who owned a uh, computer store that used to be a typewriter store. It was her father's typewriter store, and then she took over, and then, you know, she upgraded as time went on, and then the Chinese came, and they said, we want to buy it. She said, no, I like it. I like this. And they said, well, we're going to open up down the street, and since we got relatives from China and all the connections, we're going to undercut you. And just like they said, it <laughs> worked. Just like they said, they undercut her, and she couldn't, couldn't keep up, and she had to close. I personally, because I've never felt like I was poor, because I never was poor. I would spend more money at the black place. Indeed. That's what it was it. You know, I spend more money with black people. That's what you did a good job. If that's my point. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. feel like there's the, there's the component. Like, what I want to do is do a good black business list. Like... Not saying that people don't have to. So one of the things that this whole thing is is about is we don't even have like Tanil faces the challenge of trying to put our people to work in black establishments, etc. And it's a crazy cycle. So we want black restaurants, but we don't have black employees that are service oriented. So then you go to the place. But then you got she they like to deal with black employment at the at the lowest level. I don't think there's a black employee like if you're at a certain p- tier, I don't think you have an employment problem. There's a tier though that does not that does have an employment problem, but they need a whole plethora of things to get them right, mm-hmm. right? Um it's like some things have missed been missed in the process. And so I just think like so what's the balance? Or visit a store. To do? Now this whole conversation started because old boy called and said that I was wrong for saying that if you're making fifteen dollars an hour, you shouldn't have four kids. Yeah. And he like was like, "Who the hell am I? Whatever." To say how many children you have. Right. right. Like yeah. I'm saying, you should have as many children as you can afford. 
that you want that you can afford. But if you can't afford them, what's the plan? Now, but you are now. Now you want to talk about a prison, a uh, uh, school to prison pipeline? You can't afford your kids, and you let them turn into okay. All right, let me stop. It's just Lucius Barker. Barker is one of the most specializing in judicial politics, constitutional law, and African American politics. Barker has actively role played in presidential campaigns for JFK and Chicago's own Barack Obama. Lucius Barker is an esteemed author of a number of Does he have Amisha Cross books, on the line? Including co-authorship of two major college textbooks. He has served as the initial editor for the prestigious works like the National Political Science Review and National Journals of Black Political Scientists. Amisha? Professor Barker served as an executive director for a conference at Stanford University for African Americans, the research and policy perspective. Today, Lucius Barker is continuing an active career in research and writing. His work and his legacy have created progress for the black race and helped restore its value and power. Now that's the it power of every power. Brought to you by the University of Illinois Urbana Champlain. Live from the Xfinity Studios at WVON. You're listening to The Morning Show with Mays Jackson on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Rise and shine. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1698. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. But Todd, you know how we do at the top of the hour. Got to say what's up to the rest of the WVON Morning Show team. What's up to Samantha Thomas? She is sitting in with us on traffic news and the weather as well as Miss La Tierra. She is a music conductor of soul playing. Got to say what's up to my co-host, Todd Stroger. But Todd, you know every Monday we take the soul plane all the way to Washington, D.C. for our D.C. update with Miss... Amisha Cross. Amisha, how you feeling today? Good morning, Maze and Todd. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. All right, Amisha, so there's so much going on. I'm going to run through my list. You know how I do. And then I'm going to just let you start. All right, so we got the New Hampshire results. We got the Vegas primary, I mean, the Vegas caucuses with the South Carolina primary. What will they mean for the candidates? Will this be Joe Biden? Will South Carolina be Joe Biden's last stand? Uh, plus the Bloomberg factor. Uh, you know what? And I think this is what I want to do, Amisha. I want to save the Bloomberg factor for the second half because I got questions. But let's start here. Let's give me an update with the, the presidential update. So Donald Trump has gotten off. He's been exonerated. Now we are back into the full swing of the presidential election. What is going on? Absolutely. So first of all, just a, a point of order. He has been acquitted, not exonerated. Oh, so not right, 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 right. Um, so President Trump has basically gone on his victory lap post uh, post impeachment and the impeachment trial and he is now looking to close the score with a lot of people who he considered enemies during the process um, we've seen him fire Benman we've seen him go after those who have actually who actually spoke during the impeachment inquiry and during the trial itself 
And um, right now, he is also trying to restructure the Justice Department. What President Trump is doing is showcasing, really, that executive power for him means that the other branches of government don't exist. He supersedes it all. Man. And so what are they doing to stop him, or is there anything they can do to stop him? Well, as of last week, we saw four prosecutors um, in the Roger Stone case actually quit. And now we've seen 1,100 prosecutors total actually sign on to a letter to ensure that um, there is a removal of the attorney general. So we've seen, we've seen a lot wait, of- Wait, 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 wait. So hold on. The people that worked for the attorney general signed a letter saying he needs to be fired? Yes. Now, wait a minute. Was that, does he have a copy of that letter? Yeah, it was released. And they got all their signatures on it? Yes. Okay, so you tied, you know that fight for 15 we was talking about? Yeah. They about to be in that line. Because, <laughs> you know, they going straight to 1100 That's crazy, Amisha. How do you sign a letter saying your boss should be fired? Well, when you feel like your boss is operating in a hyperpartisan manner, that effectively means that you cannot do your job. And again, a, Attorney General Barr, to his credit, which is an interesting thing to say at this point, um, mm -hmm. also fired back at President Trump regarding the tweets that he has issued during the course of the Roger Stone investigation in the trial, basically because he feels that the president is hampering him doing his own job. So I, don't, I think this is par for the course at this point. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Can I tell you what the most dangerous thing and that is? Is that if they took that list, went down and fired everybody and replaced everybody, now you talk about some brown shirt action. Right. Uh -huh. So now, see, here's the thing. I think that that I think that the answer is not necessarily, in my estimation, to quit, but to fight through it and to try and do everything that you can while you're there. I think that if all of these people sign this letter, then that must mean that, like, again, you know, they probably all got a letter in the file that they could all just pick up and say, "Oh, you think you should be fired? Well, here's your papers. Here's well, your papers." Well, you got to remember that these are uh, these are like lifers. And they believe that they have a true responsibility, and they think it's that their goal is greater than the president's. Uh, see Todd that? is one hundred percent correct there. Like these are career civil servants. It doesn't matter what the um, what the elected officials are or is in front of his name. These are people who have pledged to do their do their duty, regardless of what electoral consequences are there. That's not their role. It's not their job to protect somebody during an election cycle. It is their job to carry out their duty as they pledge to do. So I think that in the highest of honor, they are actually really standing up for their cause. I think that sounds good until you realize that there is nobody in the jobs that knows what they're doing. I feel like, so the inst if all the institutional people leave, then that means we get to keep on making up rules, right? So if there was nobody to say, hey man, you can't do that and scream up and down and jump up and down, because I feel like even Barr's, re not repudiation, but push back on Trump was like, look man, we got to at least play this thing off and do it cool. Sometimes you have to uh, sacrifice the queen. And that's what they're doing. They're trying to sacrifice the queen to show people that there's something going wrong. Right. So, Amisha, so what do you think is going to happen there with the Justice Department? The Justice Department, I think, is going to be greatly weakened. This president is showing that high, the high price of loyalty is being extremely dedicated to him, not extremely dedicated to the job you signed up to do. And I think that that's why he chose Barr. And, and to your point earlier, Maze, uh, Barr was not necessarily stepping out against the president tweeting because he felt as though this was extremely da damaging to the Justice Department. He just doesn't want the overall public to understand just how close he is to carrying the water for this president. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with his own plan. Yeah, I think that it's funny because he was like, like, I feel like sometimes when it's like, you you know, like the person just can't hold their water, they're like, we did it, we did it. And it's like, hey, yo, just be quiet and let me do my job. And if you just keep your mouth shut, we'll silence all the critics. But if you keep tweeting, they're going to keep on talking. Man, I'm going to tell you, Misha, this now, I, I, I am interested to see how this thing works out. Now, speaking of victory laps, is it true that what I heard? Did I hear the president put the beast on Daytona track yesterday? Mm -hmm. The president most certainly did. Um, Trump took to Daytona to have a story of his own told. Um, it, it, historically, we don't know whether this president has ever actually been a fan of NASCAR or not. What we do know is that most NASCAR um, observants and those who participate in the races and go are largely from the South, the Deep South, and are largely heavily Republican. So he's, he's playing toward his base. 
and he made a big show of it. The other interesting part was that it actually got rained out. So he was there for a little bit, and then he was out, and they basically canceled it, and they'll pick up again today. Well, I think that the funny thing is is that it was just opposed. Like, normally they don't have major sporting events, like, on the same day. But because the audiences are completely separate, they were able to, do, to put the All-Star game and the Daytona 500 on the same day. Now, I guess, Amisha, do you think, uh, why didn't the president come to the All-Star? I was looking for him to come to the All-Star game. I wonder how that would work out. Different population, <laughs> different city. He already knows what his um, vote margin is going to look like in the black community, despite certain um despite certain other efforts he knows that his strength is with white particularly white men in the south and he is very loyal to that group now i guess he knows that but uh i i think he probably should be thinking he could probably reconsider that considering all the black people that are now getting on board with mike bloomberg in spite of mike bloomberg being ground zero for the criminal justice reform lot what how did that happen amisha we're going to talk about this when we come back how in the heck did Mike Bloomberg hijack the whole race and now got black folks who was all talking about criminal justice reform talking about we need to elect the guy who created Stop and Frisk? Look, we got to talk about all of that, but we'll talk about it with you, Amisha, when we come back. Of the Morning Show with Mays Jackson coming up on the Talk of Chicago. 16- And no, since everyone's not a chess master, <clears throat> there are times when you do give up the queen to get a, a strong position against the other king. Yeah, I got the camera there. And I'm no, I'm no, no uh, master, that's for sure. Yeah, yes. I think these I think these people felt like this is such an important period that even though we love our jobs, we realize that we're not gonna be able to do them. And we need to let people know what is going on because this is supposed to be above uh, politics, presidential, you know, uh, edicts. And a, a lot of the positions, it's not really the president's direction. Like there are some things that are the president's direction. So, you know, he's going to appoint the Secretary of Commerce and Secretary of Defense and all that kind of stuff. And they're supposed to pretty much do his bidding. Even though in defense, defense is really complicated. But, you know, like in the Department of Justice, the law is the law. You are supposed to follow the law, not what the, the president wants you to do. And that's what those people feel like the president is trying to force them to do whatever he feels like he wants to do. I want I want to be safe today, so you guys uh, do this, look the other way while I'm doing this. It's, you know what makes it really interesting is I'm pretty sure those people love their jobs. <laughs> so to leave, really, that really means something. Bloomberg Bloomberg is so interesting 
I mean, he's got enough money to make you feel like you know him, which is a trick of advertising. If you say the same thing and show people's face enough, they will, you will feel like, huh, I really know this guy. Man, what difference does it make what his thoughts are on first stop and first? Right? And it's like, I think it's, com I, mean, I think it's completely ludicrous that we have a, that we are literally considering electing a person who we know what they will do when they have power. We've seen it. Right? Y'all mad you about what Donald it. Trump, you mad about what Donald Trump said about the Central Park Five. That mug created Central Park Five. He created the, uh, the I can't breathe situation. And it's like, niggas are just going. Excuse me. Like, and I'm cool with the money, but it's like, okay. It's like you, it's just crazy to me. But it's all good. I'm not sure. What's up, Miss Kemp? Tell J. Rome I said, what up? Y'all are one of my favorite couples to observe on social media. You're loving me. Yes, I try. Yes, I cry, cry. I return on the mat. Return of the Mac. Fuck Noah. Here I am. Return of the Mac. Return of the Mac. Here I am. You are tuned in to the Talk Struggle 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mace Jackson. Come on, close to our children, Todd. We got on the live line with the Washington, D.C. Update Miss Amisha Cross. Now, Amisha, Amisha, Amisha. This whole Michael Bloomberg thing. What the what is happening right now? First of all, this guy, I, I thought he was a Republican. Then he was a, de first he was a Democrat, then he was a Republican, then he was a Democrat in New York. Now, I remember the guy because this was the guy who gave Tony Perkwick all the money to push the pop tax on us. That's oh, the yeah. first thing I remember. Then I remember this guy, you know, all I could think about was, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And I was thinking about the policies of the New York police that were created during Mike Bloomberg's reign of, and actually his monarchy, because he bought another term, even though they had term limits, right? And then... I think about everybody that was crying and talking about Khalif Browder and how he got locked up for three years for a backpack because he was just randomly stopped and everybody was crying. And now y'all talking about electing a dude. Who did that? Amisha, how in the heck did Michael Bloomberg get like almost the second place in the polls? So a little bit of background on Bloomberg. He's kind of like a Jekyll and Hyde type character. He has given billions over the course of the past 15 years to several progressive organizations. Um, he has also been someone who elected, who got elected through his fundraising, 35 of the Democrats who flipped Republican seats in the, uh, in the last midterm. He also, before, you know, working towards the, the pop tax in, in Illinois, um, he got my congresswoman elected due to a large influx of cash when it came to Congresswoman Robin Kelly. So if we're going to be true about his record, we have to be true to, to it in its entirety. Also, if we're talking about specifically people who have criminal justice records that are problematic throughout this process, we've got Klobuchar and sentencing. We've got Buttigieg and all of his issues with the local police back in South Bend. We've got Biden who authored the crime bill. There is there are very few people on the Democratic race right now who don't have a shady past when it comes to crime and how they and, and how they treated black people. What I do find interesting about um, Bloomberg is the fact that despite what would have come and been an Achilles heel or an albatross for most people running when the, the audio was released of his comments uh, last week. He's been able to gather several endorsements, endorsements of high-ranking black people since. 
And just as insider knowledge, within the, couple, within the next couple of days, he'll have even more heavy hitters. Full disclosure, my boyfriend is political director for Bloomberg. He's also a major criminal justice attorney. So <laughs> at the end of the day, I feel like what Bloomberg has done has been able to showcase himself as someone who can fight and get grime with Trump. Because to be honest, there isn't a large expanse of difference between them and the way that they view this country. I'm going to just say this. It seems to me that we are some black ass lollipops. And and I, I'm going to say all of them have a criminal justice challenge. None of them, none of them have one that we can actively count the body. They, we can't count, we ain't got a body count. And I, I just think that the fact that our our desire to beat Trump is so great that we will get in bed with someone who already screwed you. So what are you saying? You're trying to say that we should go for, for Trump? Because no, I'm not saying go for I'm saying not those guys. I'm saying that's what they're telling you. I'm saying that we Trump talked a lot of smack, right, about, about his policies and implementation of what he thought about black people. Bloomberg showed it to you. He did it. He executed. And I'm telling you that much. Man, Jay-Z got his ugly way. He said she wasn't saying what I like. So I, when I was feeding a dollar, so I started feeding the 50s and she started saying what I wanted to say. <laughs> and that to me is essentially what is happening right now. I think we can all rationalize it. And I think everybody can figure out. But can we just do this? Can we just say the man is spending so much damn money that it's hard to turn it down? Like, can we stop trying to justify his criminal justice record and he calls me right now. 312-555-1212. Yep. Five, 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 one, two, one, two. <laughs> what? But that's my point. I'm no, saying I don't think that there's a justification for his criminal justice record, nor is there for the comments that were made as recently as 2015 and a lot of the um, a, a lot of the hard time it appears that he has in trying to clean them up. But I do think that there is something to be said, Maze, about the amount of cash that he is spending. What Bloomberg did was extremely smart in deciding that he was going to totally skip the early state primaries. Didn't care about the caucuses. He is invested totally in Super Tuesday, and he has invested heavily in black communities. And I and by heavily, I mean 15 to 1. And in areas that most elected, most people who are looking to run or are in this race, don't invest in at all. He's not, you know, leaving out rural areas, and he's doing it a, as a part of a multi-pronged strategy. He's attacking television, traditional media. He's doing it on radio. He's got the mailers. He's got everything in place to reach people of various different demographic groups and age groups. I have, and he's got the money to do it. Let me say this. Let me say that, again, I, as a political operative, if I was in the game right now, I would say take the money. I'm, I would be all, as, as many people are doing. I just think, like, you can't sell me BS. I know the prices, right? That's why you ain't got me all jumping up and down for Joe Biden. That's, I just think that we are over, black people don't see money. They don't see money a lot. And so right now, even though everything that you heard, we heard about criminal justice reform for the last ten years, everybody, like, well, I could, I, I could, I could kind of let that go. And all I'm saying is, he hasn't done a good enough job for all y'all to be off the cliff yet. Make him work. If he's spending fifty, if he got fifty million dollars and we are uh, fifty billion dollars and we only had a, a billion, yeah, y'all, y'all going too easy. Amisha, tell everybody how they can catch up with you. Absolutely, you can catch me on all things social at at Amisha Cross. Hey, y'all, that is our Amisha Cross with the Washington, D.C. update. Hey, y'all, when we come back, I, you know what? I'm going to do a little bit of everything. I skipped over a bunch, but I'm going to do a little bit of everything. But I'm going to talk about it was the greatest weekend. It was the worst weekend. It was the best weekend. It was the worst weekend. I don't think there's ever been a tale of two cities. And there's never been an example of the tale of two cities as we saw this weekend. We saw black life being protected by they would spared no expense to protect the black lives that mattered. But the black lives that didn't, guess what? There was 25 people shot this weekend, 11 of them children. I could not help but notice the difference. I got emails from Pastor Corey Brooks who was at Parkway Garden trying to deal with the mass shootings over there. Mm -hmm. Even as we were celebrating, partying, and kicking it at the All-Star Game. And it just made me say it, it, it was the best weekend, it was the worst weekend. We'll talk about it when we come back. Live from the WBON News. Woo! 
Think about that. They spared no expense to protect those black people. None. None. I'm talking about they shut Madison down. Like you could, you. It was like going to Fort Knox. Oh yeah, I mean that's that's, that's not unusual. I'm not saying it's unusual, but I'm saying that they they could it's protect like a, like a convention. They could protect the lives, and I was thinking about those black lives matter, right? And so think about, and it was funny. I, I'm. Well, it's extraordinary for a short period. Short period. I got it. I'm, I, I went um. Huh? Oh no, go ahead. No, I was just talking to everybody. Oh, I, it, I was saying though that I was thinking about how when they were having the press briefing for this and they were saying they asked Chicagoans what was the number one issue that they wanted to address. You know what they said? Youth. And it was like they stopped it. Right? You know it was youth violence, but they couldn't even bring that into it. Like, could you imagine what would have happened like if they would have did one of them bad boys in Parkway Gardens? You think they would have shot? Or do you think the whole Parkway Gardens would have been like, damn? Like yes, I I think two. Right. Now imagine taking imagine doing the NBA cares thing smack dab in the hardest hit community. Imagine when they left Parkway Gardens looked different. Painted. Like I was well. I can tell you when the Pope came, the Pope came and the First Lady came to Xavier, Lady Bird Johnson and Pope John Paul. Both times, the first time, we got a real bridge. I mean, like concrete. So, yeah. <laughs> the, when the Pope came, a fountain went up. The barn, which was a, a true barn, I mean, it was like wood, all of a sudden, it had like masonry all around it. Yes. You're right. Great things happen when big events happen in your area. This the United Center. That's yeah. how we got uh, all the stuff for the United Center because the Democratic Convention was coming. Right. So, but again, think about this, right? I was thinking about the fact that what, what bringing all of that to a place like Parkway Gardens where you really could impact. I really was pissed. I'm pissed that the black kids that get to participate are the black kids that are part of the programs that are being... It's like, even when we get the black kids, it's always going to the white folks, right? So they gave 100000 to after school matter. I'm not tripping on who got the money. But like, think about this. The black kids that got to go, guess who picked? Arnie Duncan. Huh? So while we got murders going on on the south side and he got an organization that's supposed to be stopping the violence, he busy playing in the damn celebrity game. Like, no, bro, you just got, you just went to Springfield and said, we want 25, we want 25 million of the money to be sent through us. And it's like, again, who says, to me, you got Chicago credit. So when they ask you, where do you go? You need to take them mugs to the hardest, hardest hit areas. Mm -hmm. Right? Because the NBA ain't going to let nothing happen. They're going to secure the whole joint. Right, and the city. Right. But think about what that means to them kids. I just... But it, I'm not going to blame nobody. It's on us. Pay for it it's like, but here's the other thing. We don't have no check-in people. Right? Like, it used to be a time, like, you came to Chicago, you had to check in and somebody would make you spread it around. Mm -hmm. Right? And even if it was the GDs or the BDs or whatever, 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 everybody knew when you came into town, you better check in. In some kind of way, those benefits got disseminated to the people. Right? To some people. So whether you had some guys from this deck and this deck and this deck, everybody came in, they knew they had to check in, else they might find themselves on the other end of an empty net. I think Oh, I think Social Works did And I think they did something with Corey Brooks They had the watch party But I'm saying No, 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 no Now y'all know what I'm talking about I'm not talking about sending the representatives I'm saying bring Kawhi, bring LeBron Bring all them dudes Right smack dab into the heart of the hardest Of the neighborhoods that they supposed to come from 
Okay, I'm three. Yeah, three. Because I'm not, I'm not being critical, really. I really think it was just so, such an example. And quite frankly, nobody said nothing. Right? Like, could you imagine being in Chicago, 43, 25 people shot, and you got LeBron and all of the biggest black, blackest people? Somebody should say, man, y'all. Some. But that would have marred the weekend. Okay, I'm through talking. Our trip of a lifetime, lifetime is powered by South and South Africa Airways. This news report is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quick and Love. Hey, see where all those coats got stolen? How do you steal a hundred? It wasn't because it, it was one person working coat check. And people was like, look, it's one person working coat check. You know, one person working coat check would be like, I need my, my dollar tip. They was like, man, get went in and took all the coats. Took their own damn coats. Yeah, but who can take 150 coats? They, the, 150 people. Oh. I'm saying they bum rushed the coat. It wasn't. One group came in and took it out the back door. It was one person working coat check, and they was like, "Man, we've been drinking, we've been smoking, we've been doing all this, and you about to make us wait one at a time to get these coats." So people just went and got whatever coats they wanted. They busted through and took the coats. Oh my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Wow! Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like. Um, but All Star has been here I'm glad it came I'm glad it's gone <laughs> so you look close to it. I don't know I don't need it to be back I like one way to say it. I got an all-star hangover, but I also got like, if I got, if you know I'm going to be a little low today, then I feel like the rest of the team post do their thing. I'd be like, it is what it is. Sad day when we can't have a... Uh Mae Jackson singing Prince. You are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago 1698 AM. I'm your host, Mae the NBA, that is, it is something to behold, a real production. You know what I mean? Like when somebody comes and they doing, like no mediocrity, no half, everything is tip top. Everybody's professional, it's all. I'm going to tell you the NBA, but you know what I've come to recognize that the All-Star game is produced for TV. The All-Star weekend is really a television production. Everything else is peripheral. I can see that. Everything else is peripheral. It is all about, again, making people watch it and feeling like, man, I wish I was there. Right? And so you see all the stuff and you be, woo! But Todd, I'm going to tell you, I'm very glad 
that the All Star Game has to part with us. Pressure, man. All Star Game, national events locally put you under. International events locally put you under local pressure. <laughs> right? Because it's like you are competing with the world in your own town. Yeah, that's true. And it's like nobody really realizes how much, like, it's a nas- an international thing. So everything that you want to do is intensified. And you know how Chicago people do, right? When somebody from out of town comes, they want to be with the out of town people better than the Chicago people. Right. Until you show up and you act like you're famous, then they be like, don't nobody care about you around here. Because <laughs> you know we ought to say that. Um, but tell what I found odd yesterday, and I'm going to talk. So can I say this? I got to give a big, one of my biggest things that I said I wanted to do was to make sure that I, I could care less about parties and all that stuff at this point. Quite frankly, Todd, I've been there, done that, right? And it's like, and the parties are no longer fun to me because everybody's looking at the party through their phone as compared to in the music and all that stuff and everybody trying to have a concert in their own room, in their own circle. Um, but I will tell you that I was, I had a great time at the uh, Rising Stars game. That was great. It was just great. And I had a blast last night at the actual game. Oh, I saw some friends at the Rising Star game. I saw Brian Wilson. I told you that already. Didn't I? Brian Wilson, who? The singer? Yeah, I told you that. We went no. to, to. Oh, no, that was Jerome. Brian Wilson, yeah, Brian Wilson. Uh, Brian Courtney Wilson? No, it's just oh. Brian. Oh. <laughs> he went to uh, Whitney Young. He played basketball there. And, uh, but we went to, to, to grammar school together, like, you know, eight years. Okay. I ran into quite a few people locally, nationally as well. Uh, but one of the. Th- can I send a big shout out to one of the biggest things that was important to me, Todd, when we talked about this was making sure that my son, who is an NBA geek, mm-hmm. got a chance to go. That was my brother. I gotta send a big, big, big shout out to Uncle L. Big old Uncle E L H in the building for putting it down. I called, I said, hey man, I gotta get my son in. Cause I had a couple tickets for me and the wife. But I said, I gotta get my son and my daughter in. The Big E said, I got you. He said, I got a penthouse. You send the kids up with me. Now, check this out. Not, not Literally, it was a suite. <laughs> and uh, check it out. When he got up to the box, guess what? Now, this, this, you like this. I wasn't really a big fan of it. But for my son, you know, it, it was a big deal. He was hanging out with the, he watched the game with the uh, whole bad Wisconsin Badgers team. Get out. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Yep, they had a big win there the weekend. Too. Yeah, yeah. It was funny because <laughs> it was like I was trying to be cool because you know I got my good, my guy. Yeah, I will say I, I I I did cry a little because Illinois is like lost three in a row. Uh, man, was, man, it's killing me too. But you know, you know we got some some family on that team. So if my son was like, you know, my son, it's like you know my son is like five one, but he walked like he's seven feet tall. There you go. He got the basketball player walk, but it was like he was having a great time. Yeah. And my daughter went and she had a great time. My wife went and she had a great time. And, you know, I was just, it's like I was just glad that everybody had a good time. Today's Hans' birthday. Happy birthday, Hans, even though I know you're asleep. Uh, you mean he's not up listening to the morning show? Uh, no, I tried to get him to come. I was mm. like, Mays would love to talk to you. But he always looks like, hmm. I'd be like, where are my $25 at? That's what I would say. <laughs> um, but, Todd, in that same weekend, as I was, you know, as we were loving, yucking it up, Mm-hmm. There was also one of the most violent Februarys ever. There were 11 children shot out of 25 with three fatalities. And Todd, it seemed like Parkway Gardens went back up in February. And while the people with the violence, and here's what's bothering me. The people with the violence prevention plan money were busy at the All-Star game. And it seems to me that the people who are who the mayor has put in charge of the violence prevention should have dropped their celebrity in the NBA stuff and gotten their butts down into those communities and fixed it mm-hmm. or did what they could to deploy. See, like, my thing is, how are we taking pictures and kicking it? Like, I, I, first of all, I'm not, I don't, and you see, this is what's going to happen because see, then what's going to happen is they're going to be mad at me and they're going to tell the people to come. But this is the point, Todd. You can't be taking pictures and having a great time when your job is to save and, and there's violence. Like, you got to at least match it up, right? So, like, if you came and told me that you handled the worst of the worst and you get deployed and you got 
tens of millions of dollars to go work with these kids. And then we have an outbreak of violence during the All-Star game and you playing in the All-Star game but you ain't made no nothing about what's going on in the neighborhoods. I, it's, it's hard for me to, to put that together, Todd. Like, I'm saying like, man, bro, you, 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 y'all, y'all, they making everything go through a group. Mm -hmm. Right? So, and let's be clear. Arnie, Duncan, he got the biggest, he is really the guy right now that is running the violence prevention kind of thing. He's kind of like the guru. He got the millions from the foundations and all the people. But again, what's the outcome? What, 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 what? What was the outcome of that this weekend? What did they do to deploy? What are have we heard from them on Monday? Let's say everybody's kicking it on Friday. What is the plan now? What's that what what's the Chinese lady that they got from LA that's not a crime strategist? And where's the gang chief that they got from up north that they said, remember he was part of uh what was TO's thing? Oh, uh Ceasefire. Ceasefire. Remember he was like he had the same resume as and he lived up north and he was going to be deployed and we got the gang strategy and all that stuff. Todd, like, did we, I almost feel like they got to hide under, not hide. But am I crazy for asking, like, what's the response now? Like, because I'm saying, I felt it was disingenuous to be taking, playing the all-star game in the most violent February in and you got the money. You got the bag. Where's your peoples? You never know when people are going to shoot, you know? Okay, but once they do, ain't you supposed to be deployed to go figure it out and make sure? Maybe that's what was happening. Well, that's not his job. I, I, I would say that's not his job. What's, whose job is it? I, I'm sure he's speaking on whose job to go out in the streets and, you know, there's, there's layers. Okay, so I got to figure out how does this work. So who do we hold responsible when they get the money for all of that stuff? So if you got fifty million dollars to deal with violence issues, how who do who do we talk to? Where's the bus stop? The Let's price. talk about it when we come back. Go ahead. Yes. When no, we come right. back, we'll talk about it. More of the morning show with Mays Jackson coming up on the Talk of Chicago, oh, well, sixteen ninety WVON. The question really would be more like who's on the. Who is on the street? Is there anybody on the street? Well, my question is, though, but he should be saying our people are deployed into th this. is our plan. Like, I just feel like... Well, what, are you trying to say he should have a press conference? I'm saying he should he, he should be with Corey Brooks and Corey Brooks is somebody. Somebody should be in Parkway Gardens right now being like, this is what's happening. Somebody should be giving an update as to what's going on. That's all I'm saying. And if you get to get the bag, right... My thing is all these white guys want to come and talk to you and tell you about all the, the work that they're doing. They can go get the money from all these foundations. But when the time comes, what now what? Y'all, this has been a shitty Monday. Hmm. I want to. I think we're going to the Museum of Science and Industry. Oh, that sounds hard. Black Creativity. That is too hard. That used to be a museum. Like, I remember going to other museums. Like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Where is the... You're right, because uh, there's so much to do. That museum is huge. We've never been able to go through the whole thing in the day. Uh, I feel like I've been there since the campaign. I'm sure I have. Me too. And I gotta go take my son to school.
Stop and go traffic so good. again plan your travel times accordingly. On the Ike, inbound Ike is pretty slow between Western. And you want to look out for traffic right there between Western and the Burn Interchange. However, it's looking light. 30 minutes travel time there. And again, the Stevenson point pretty clearly. Kennedy Express Lanes traffic is getting back to normal. And if you're traveling on any of the L trains this morning, the CTA red and blue lines are running but not stopping at the Jackson Street station due to a shooting. You are tuned into the Top of Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host Tua Stroger Tide. It is a wrap for an NBA All-Star Weekend, and I'm I think I'm probably be in trouble for that one too. So I'm gonna chill, right? Because I probably heard somebody feeling this. And they go, I, like, here's my thing. I just felt like I had the opportunity to experience the best of both worlds. Well, actually, I didn't experience the worst, but I did experience. You know, I went to the All-Star Game, went to the uh, Celebrity, went to Crossover, went to a bunch of stuff, Todd, and it Dang, was... what didn't you go to? What I didn't go, go to was I the Slam I Dunk. I saw you out playing after that. Uh, no, I wasn't at the Slam Dunk contest, but I was at the game. I, and I had a great time. Kudos to Chicago for produ producing an extra, an excellent event. I just, I guess I felt like, you know, I was thinking about all, how important those black lives were in the center of the city, Right? We had the most important black people to white people and built some some of the most important black people to billionaires in the world. And yet, Todd, not five miles away, while we were shooting hoops and kicking it, mm -hmm. there was a bloodbath going on. Todd, I'm gonna let you go ahead. You had something you want to say? And then I'm gonna take these three calls and then close it. No. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go to the calls. Tamika, you wanna talk to Chicago? 1690. What's up? Tamika hung up. All right, Mary, you want to touch Chicago? 1690. Mary? Did Mary go too? She hung up? All right, let's go to Antonio. Antonio, you there? All right, looks like everybody hung up. Everybody hung up, Todd. Um, so. I did, I did have something fast. fast. Can't remember what it was. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Well, I'm going to tell you. Um, I am going to say that I had an awesome 
weekend. I'm glad it's over. I feel like there was, I think, you know, I, I just, I think that social media, I'm really starting to have a feel away. Because it's like you look at the posts and you be at social, you look at the social media posts and then you be worried and hurry up to get to somewhere. Mm-hmm. Only to find out that it's really the social media post that you saw. It's like, you know, hurry up to get down, you see the all star three by three, big thing, you take the picture, you like, I can't wait to get in there. And it'd be like, oh no, that was it. That was it. <laughs> and um Yeah, man, I'm glad it's over. I'm tired. This it this was this was I've always found those type of things tiring. Cause it's, but that's just me because there's always a lot of people. You know, you gotta. I think it's always maneuver. trying to. You, it, you know what? It's exhausting because you gotta take. It's not like you gotta take care of everybody. You know, you gotta like. You gotta move people around. You gotta get everybody on the same schedule. You gotta coordinate. It. When, you know. You gotta find parking. But I think it's probably the hardest thing. No, nah, we had to, we walked. We well, Ubered and walked. Oh, that's right. So we that was good. We walked home and we Ubered there. But I'm gonna tell you. It's like trying to get everybody scheduled, getting every. It'd be, I'd be like, next time I'll be like, you know what? I got the tickets. Y'all take care of everything else. Cause you know, the, you, you know, everybody got something they want to do. And I just be like, you know what? Just call. It. Let's end it all. I'd be like, how about I just sit here in my chair and go to sleep? <laughs> man, I like doing that. I, man, you know what? It's like some days I run around so much, and for everybody, I just be like, can I just sit? I just want to sit there. Mm-hmm. That's why today, after I take my son to school, I'm going to take a nap. Sometimes you need a good nap. I just need to I need to just decompress. Mary, you're on the top of Chicago, 1690. Yes, I would just like to make a correction. The 1,100 prosecutors who wrote the letter requesting Barr to ex- uh, resign, those were former prosecutors who had served in both Republican and Democratic administrations. Thank you. They were not current prosecutors. Thank you, Mary. Because I was like, that sounds like some crazy mess about her. And there is something in their guidelines. It would actually probably be illegal for them to write something like that while they're still working for the Justice Department. Man. Okay. Thank you, Mary, for getting us right. People around here, BC, I got to get that. Mary saying now? She said that they were former prosecutors, not. Oh, oh, they're not currently there. Man, I was like, how you gonna sign a letter saying I want my boss fired? Seriously. Uh, that you know who did that? Who would do that time? Yeah. Somebody in your administration. They'll be, <laughs> they'll be up there like, get rid of them. Give me my check, sir. Get rid of them. Give me my check. Sir. Let me tell you. I'm gonna tell you. You cross me. You say you want me fired. Let me tell you what. You ain't even gotta worry about what the question is. What's gonna happen? No, no. They were. Uh, they were people who I believe. They were saying. Somebody said to me. Actually, he worked for uh, Forrest Claypool. Uh, and his name escapes my name, but escapes me right now. But he said, uh, you can't blame me if people are telling us stuff that's going on in the administration. And he was right, because the things that they put in the newspaper, they had, there was not real substance. It was just if you put enough things in the paper, people feel like something has happened wrong. See, and that's my thing. That's why I said I'm, that's why I'm doing Illinois Monotony, right? Because the paper is trying to tell a story that they don't even know. And watch, wait till this week's episode, because I'm going to break down the Pat Doherty thing, too. You know me and Pat Doherty used to hang out. He's my numbers guy. Jay? Huh? Jay. Pat Dory, the guy who got indicted on Friday. He was my numbers guy. We're going to talk about I that. I thought it was Jay. No, not Jay. No, it was Pat. Oh. Oh, dang. I wonder how they related. Hey, y'all. <laughs> you know all those Irish guys know somebody. Sure. It's South Chicago. We got to get out of here. So, for Samantha Thompson, in, excuse me, for Samantha Thomas in the newsroom, for La Tierra on the Wheels of Steel, for my co host, Todd Stroger, I am the host of the WVON Morning Show. And if you don't like it, you, I, I'm still asking the question every day. What's enough for the black people? And if you don't like it, you know what you can do. You can still tell them. May said, "We out of here. Peace." The talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation. There were no cups for water today. And seeing that somebody stole my tea, my coffee cup. Right. And don't say tea cup because that sounds very. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, you shame me and I'm not saying teacup anymore. <laughs> my teacup. It sounds too, yeah, too much Alice in Wonderland. Like, yeah, my oh, wait, teacup is gone. Even I can no, see this. No, my teacup. Yeah, people will be talking about you. 
Oh, that, challenge well, I don't your, bother. Challenge your masculinity. That don't and your teacup. And I, your teacup. I'd well, be like, I got a wife and two kids. I don't care. I'd be like, that's pretty alpha. Of and you. I'm not going for any anybody else. That's pretty alpha. I don't need a side chick. I don't. That's pretty. Alpha-ish. I don't need a mistress. Right. That's what we wouldn't be saying. If you said teacup, you need a ma- a mistress. I don't need a. <laughs> I don't need no sigma. So I'm cool. I, you I, you need a sigma. You need a sigma in your life. No, I already have a waiter. Yeah. <laughs> but I bet he knows his cross date. <laughs> I know my cross date. What is it? It's none of yours. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. Ah, classic That's moment. That's me and my heart. You and your teacup. We out of here. Peace.